Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. In today's episode, it's just uh, an interview of me. Yeah, that's right. One of you guys out there that has a YouTube channel reached out to me. By the way, shout out to you, Cali Picker. Um, he reached out to me in order to do an interview. And um, we did an interview. Um, it was broken up into two parts, but I put it all together and edited it. <laughs> added this little intro that you're watching right now and um that's it and then i'm uploading it so you guys can watch the full thing so um there's not really any or many interviews uh, about me out there i have made videos about myself uh i made a lot of videos about myself <laughs> but the point is is that um this is just a straight up interview and um i just thought that i would like to share it with you guys and i'm sure you guys would love to see it so without further ado my interview Live now? Well, it's about, I think it's like a, uh, it's now it's live one, two seconds, but it'll be like a 19 second delay on okay. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. So, that sounds good, though. All good, though. Yeah. yeah. Hey, everybody. This is James Bennett of the Cali Picker. And today on Do You Know Who I Am? I got Jose Arteaga, right? Arteaga or Arteaga? You can call me whatever you want. Just don't call me too early in the morning. How's that? <laughs> well, say hello, Jose. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great, guys. Uh, doing great. Good to see you, as, as always. And uh, good to see everyone else is out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, uh, Jose, you're from – you're living in Mexico right now where I want to get the hell out of here and go down there. Uh, but they've closed off the borders. But, uh, yeah, tell us, uh, where, where are you from? Where are you from? Where'd you come from? Yeah. Originally, well, originally, um, my mom, no. <laughs> Sorry, I was about to... <laughs> no, okay. Originally, I'm from uh, Miami, Florida. I was born and raised in Miami. Uh, both of my parents are uh, Cuban refugees, you know, back uh, from the, you know, the, the communist days. I don't know if you guys are aware of uh, the whole Fidel Castro thing. So my parents, you know, were a part of that. They fleed uh, uh, Cuba, landed in Miami. They met in Miami. Uh a little, a few months later, I popped out, and then bam, here I am. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, I lived in Miami pretty much my whole life. I was a chef. Um, I'm 38 years old right now, so like, um, I was a chef pretty much up until like 30, 31, 32 years old, give or take. And then I went down a different route. Um, you know, my family uh, was basically. Um, oh, I see some. Someone's in the chat there. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it going? Well, yeah, thank you for the chat. yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, this is a pretty cool uh, stream thing, you know. Yeah, this is what we found out, and and you know, yeah. I did this. I put it to where we can see. Uh, okay. You know, we have other people that uh, uh, are saying hello to us, and and uh, that's awesome, yeah. man. Hi, hi, uh, Opie. Hi, Larry. Hi, everybody. Um, but but yeah, so I mean, basically, um, you know, my parents um were you know in the restaurant business when I was a kid, and so I was in the restaurant industry since I was like probably 11, 12 years old. And then as I got older, um, another part of my family, they were into um, film and photography and all that stuff. And so like, I was always kind of surrounded by that. Um, when I graduated high school, I decided to go down the chef route because I just didn't want to wear a tie. I couldn't have that, that nine to five job. I couldn't live that life. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to be a chef. And um, it's not because, you know, it was just basically because of the lifestyle. Because uh, for me, you know, I had full ride scholarships, you know, to study medicine, um, study uh, law, all that kind of stuff. But and I, I did give it a shot because, you know, I wanted to at least uh, make my parents a little happy. Um, and so, like, I, I gave it a shot. I went to I even try that computer uh, engineering, computer software, you know, all that shit. And and I was, a, I was big into computers back in the day. But you know, at the end of the day, it was just more like um, practicality. You know, everyone, you know, when, you know how your parents are. They're like, you know, you should do something that, you know, um, you know, it's going to pay the bills, you know, something you can do forever, you know, that whole thing. So I fell for that trap. And that's why I went down and became a chef. Now, when I went down, you know, when I started, you know, cooking and doing all that, I, I realized, oh, wow, wait a minute. I'm actually really good at this. I love doing this. Not just necessarily the cooking aspect of it, but like, you know, leading a kitchen, the business aspect of all that. And then I discovered, you know, some other things about myself that I was like, oh, wow, wait a minute. You know, like you, you know, you're good at running a business. You're good at uh, leadership. You're good at, you know, uh, building things. You're good at like all this stuff, you know? So I was like, damn, fuck it. You know what I mean? I just kept that in the back of my head. I kept being a chef. But as time went on, and then after 2008, the 2007 uh, situation, I lost everything, everything I had built up until that point. Um, I tried to, you know, do the right thing. You know, me, you know what I mean? Like do what they, what society said we had to do. You know what I mean? Then, then that's basically how I lost everything. And then why I was having difficulty uh, rebuilding again. 
So, you know, after losing everything, I, I couldn't get off the ground. I was just stuck there. I lost my business. I lost uh, my career. I lost, um, you know, not necessarily my career, but I mean, in a sense, I was a chef, you know, like an actual chef. And then, you know, back after 2008, you know, um, the only jobs that were available were like cook. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I was getting more. I was getting paid more back in 2001, you know, um, as 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 a potato peeler as I was after the 2008 2009 crash. And and now I don't even want to, you know. And again, you know, I was accounting for inflation and all that stuff. But you know, basically, I tried to rebuild after losing everything. Lost my my wife. I mean, not my wife. You know, I wasn't married then. But basically, you know, like that whole uh, girlfriend for a long time thing. You know, I lost everything. I had to end up going back and sleeping on my mom's couch. All right. How about them apples? You know, like uh, the house that I ended up paying out. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, uh, got, you know, got rid of that mortgage for my mom. And I, I ended up having to sleep there and, you know, kind of pick up from there. And um, yeah, man, that was like kind of like my first um, real, you know, um, all the way at the top, all the way to the bottom. And this, again, was no no fault of my own. You know, I, I, I was doing everything correctly. Right. And then um, after that. You know, basically, um, I, I, I started kind of like rebuilding, trying to like, uh, you know, do my thing or what have you, you know what I mean, in Miami. But as you as you guys, a lot of you guys remember, you know what I mean, we still haven't recovered. So, you know, from the economic downturn. So, you know, no matter how much I tried, you know, I, I set up another catering business. I, I tried to set up a food truck. I, I was making, you know, I was working three jobs. I literally was work. I, I swear, you know, um, and then at the same time trying to, you know, put back uh, my, my catering business and all that. I mean, I worked at Metro Zoo. You know, basically, I worked at the zoo, okay, because, uh, you know, um, they were at that point, they were trying to transition and build like this huge uh um, what you would call it, like this huge, um, like fancy restaurant type of thing there. But all they had, but when they hired me and my and a friend of mine, you know, all they had there was just a food court, you know, like chicken tenders and hamburgers, and it was just a bunch of kids coming in, you know, every single day. So I mean, me and my friend got hired with the idea that, oh yeah, we're here to, you know, be chefs and fucking, you know, build this whole thing. But when we got there, we just, you know, we realized that we were just eating chicken tenders and hamburgers, and and you know, we're like, ah, fuck it, you know what I mean? At least we're getting paid pretty good for this. Um, but again, it wasn't good. It was just the best job available. You know, again, I was getting paid more in 2001 than I was. By the way, I'm sorry if I'm going off on my rants or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's an interview, right? That's right. Hey, this is your <laughs> interview. Well, me, we're the one about you. Yeah. Yeah. So I was working there. I was working at um, this place called Books and Books in Coral Gables, which I don't even know if that place is still around anymore. Um, and that place was around forever. And I was like a, I was a chef. In a in a in like a like a bookstore basically you know what I mean and it was like a fancy bookstore in the middle of Coral Gables that's Coral Gables is like uh, I guess like Rodeo Drive or Beverly Hills type of area you know in Miami um, it's kind of like where the University of Miami is a lot of money affluence there but anywho so I was working there and um, so yeah I would work those two jobs and then I had like a little side gig you know I can't mention on air you know we're gonna you know, <laughs> it's not the past the statute what is the statute what's a uh, what is it? Was it when you commit a crime or something? I, I did not commit any crimes, but was it like when you got to wait the the years? It's all, um, uh, yeah, it's, um, statute of limitations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyways, uh, but um, but yes, I was doing that, and then also trying to set up my my catering business, and then um, you know, trying to make that into the, a food truck because back then was when that was the whole the whole food truck thing was starting to like really blow up. And so I was like, well, fuck it. You know what I mean? I'm all about the business. You know what I mean? I know, you know, how to really maximize, you know, um, food, you know, food cost and, and, you know, you know, cost and, you know, all that shit. So I was like, man, forget it. You know, this whole food truck thing phenomena, it, it's like a dream. You know what I mean? Let me go down that route. And again, the universe, man, you know what I mean? Like three times, three times it failed. Okay. Like I had all the equipment, I had everything. You know what I mean? I don't want to get into details into, you know, what happened, but it was just basically, I, I couldn't do it all myself. Um, I, I needed like some sort of uh, business partner or some sort of partner to do all this in, and it, it failed all three times. And so basically, after trying to push ahead, trying to do everything, trying to work so much, you know, tr just trying to, you know, you know, build up, you know what I mean? Everything I lost and just trying to, you know, rebuild it again from, from the ground up. And nothing was working. Nothing was working. Basically, it was just, you know, I was just, it, I was just how about this? I was just one tiny emergency away from losing it all again. And basically that's kind of what happened. What happened was that I was on my way to work. I forgot where it was, the books and books or the zoo, whatever the fuck. And between that, I got a flat tire and I realized 
I mean, not that I realized, I knew this already before it happened, but at that moment in time, I was like, holy shit, I don't, I don't, have, I don't, not, I don't have any money for, to fix this. I can't be late to work. What am I going to do? And by the way, this is Miami, you know, so it's like, you know, I'm, it's like an hour, half an hour, 45 minute drive from point A to point B from job to job. You know what I mean? It's just like just three hours alone and, uh, and commuting. All right. You know, basically waking up at five in the morning, getting home, you know, one o'clock in the morning type of shit. But anyways, um, and, you know, I called my aunt, you know, my aunt was the one that was able to, you know, help me out, you know, 50 bucks. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, um, like a lot of money, but it was, it was a lot. And so that's when I realized, oh, I got to make a change. I got to make a change. And now, you know, this is not, you know, it's only going to get worse in Miami or whatever, but it's just only going to get worse here. Um, I'm about to start a new again. I was about to move. I was about to do all these things. And I go, you know what? I told myself, you know what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sell it all. Everything that I have, you know, and just start again, just start anew. Um, before when times were good, you know, I had traveled a lot, you know, they were across the U.S. on vacation, you know, with my girl. Um, at the time I went to Seattle, I went up and down the East Coast. I, I've been around. And so to me, it's like, you know what? Fuck it. You know what I mean? Instead of moving to a new cheaper home here in Miami and then continuing this fucking, uh, you know, this, exactly. cycle of, uh, this vicious cycle of death, you know, I go, you know what? Let me just sell everything and move to the, across the country. Fuck it. So then what I said, so then what I just started doing is like, okay, I'm a chef and I'm a well-trained chef. So let me look into what kind of work is out there. So first off, you know, I went to Las Vegas, you know, looking, looking, I'm looking in Las Vegas and Las Vegas. Yeah. They were paying up the wazoo, but I'm from Miami. So going to Las Vegas wouldn't have been much of a difference. And, uh, you know, I was still too, you know what I mean? I was like, I, no, you know what I mean? Think, certain things were going on in my life. And I knew if I went out there, you know, Vegas is Vegas, bro. You know what I mean? I did not want to go out there because I probably was not going to, I would not be talking to you today. All right. Just right. To fucking, you know, and so I was looking around everywhere and shit like that. And then the, the only place that kind of like popped to my mind was Seattle, somewhere I always wanted to go. I said, fuck it. If I'm going to make a complete change, let me go complete change. You know, so what would be the complete opposite of Miami and the furthest away outside of Alaska? Portland, yeah. maybe. Seattle, no, no, yeah. no, 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 Seattle. Actually, yeah. you know, you would think Portland, by the way, you know, Seattle's a little further, but you would think Portland, but actually after I was living up there, I saw Portland was actually closer to Miami than Seattle. Seattle really is fucking another planet. But anyways, by the yeah. way, shout out to all my Seattle people. You know, I love, I love, I lived up there for a long time. But yeah, completely different. So I said, fuck it. So what I did is I sold all my restaurant equipment that I had, you know, stoves, uh, you know, all kinds of shit. A lot of thousands of dollars worth of equipment. I sold all that, sold my van, sold sold everything I own, just sold everything. And I just fuck it, whatever the fuck I can carry with me, you know, in my bags and, uh, in, in, you know, in, uh, my, on me. And that's it. So I just I filled my bags. I filled a few, a few boxes and I told my, my family back home, you know, I go, hey, once I get there and I have an address, you know, send these things to me, whatever. And I just got on a plane and went all the way to Seattle. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have a job. I didn't have anything. I just went out there and I had a few bucks saved and I go, whatever. You know what I mean? Let me just get here and figure it out. And yeah, sure enough, you know what I mean? Like I started working at this place called uh, the Celtic Swell. All right. Again, look how fucking different. All right. I mean, I, I came from South Beach and then I was and I went. Oh, by the way, and I moved out there in January of 2013, I think. All right. So. January, all right. So I'm fucking. So I went to to the to to the, my first job on on Alki Beach, and um, for anyone that knows anything about that area, Seattle, that's the only beach, you know what I mean, in the whole Seattle area. And again, you know what I mean. I had never even seen the Pacific Ocean, you know what I mean. I never even been all the way out there. So, you know, I went to fucking. Uh, I went. I, I you know I, I got a job there um, at, at that place, and it was so surreal from the from from. The moment I got there, everything, and it was just kept, you know, building on top of that. You know, it was. By the way, that that job was just um, a shit job. It was just a bar, you know. Like imagine, you know, called the Celtic Swell. You know, it was just like a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of Guinness and uh, shepherd's pie. You know what I mean? Like, it was just basically yeah. that. Thank you know you know man. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, but to me, my this whole surreal thing was just like getting on a bus, taking that bus to work. You know, going all this, you know, high elevation, seeing snow. Seeing the the you know the the ocean, which wasn't the ocean, I was in Puget Sound, but whatever. You know what I mean? To me, it was like, oh my god, you know, like negative forty eight degree water when I just came from positive. Yeah, it's water. Water. yeah, and just all this shit. And so to me, it was just like, 
wow, you know what I mean? Like just that was just like such an adventure. So even though the job I had at the Celtics Hall was crap, it was like, ah, whatever. You know what I mean? Like the, the whole thing, this is so much fun. This is an adventure. You know, everything was just awesome. Um, but eventually, you know what I mean? I was like, all right, let me see what else there is out here. I mean, obviously, you know what I mean? Like, you know, let me go to downtown. And so I go to downtown and I get a job at one of the best, fanciest hotels in downtown at that time, which was at the Alexis Hotel. I want to mm -hmm. say, I think it was the Alexis. I don't even know if that's a hotel in Miami or not, but anyways. And so I get there and it was like one of the nicest, fanciest places in Seattle. I'm like, bro, this is like a, like a one-star hotel in Miami. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, I mean, it was all right. And by the way, so like, and I was working breakfast and the guy that I worked with, now that I come to think of it, he looked exactly like you, bro. I swear to God. You know, so, like, so me and him, you know, we were, um, you know, like we would get there like at four in the morning and work that breakfast shift. And uh, it was miserable, but it was fun. You know, because for me, again, you know, wake, having to wake up so early, you know, get on the bus and then, uh, you know, going over the, the West Seattle Bridge, you know, going into downtown Seattle, you know, um, uh, where my bus stop, you know, left me and then where how I had to walk just to my job. It was like a 90 degree steep. You know what I mean? Like uh, walk, you know, kind of Seattle is kind of like uh, San Francisco in some way. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so, you know, just walking down that whole steep thing, you know, grabbing on the shit, make sure I'm not slipping on the ice, you know, I'm getting to work, uh, you know, I'm coming, uh, coming in contact with my buddy, you know, um, damn, I forgot his name right now, but, you know, that I worked with and uh, again, he looked just like you and he was miserable as fuck, like, uh, you know, as well, but I wasn't miserable. I was actually pretty happy. It was just, the job was just, you know, shit. Um, but, but yeah, we would have a great time and laugh and just, you know, it was awesome. And then I found out he wasn't from Seattle either. I found out he was from like the Midwest and he had a similar situation where he had his own restaurant, a barbecue place and blah, blah, blah. And he ended up out there and, you know, just trying to make the best of it. And, you know, basically why I ended up in Seattle was because it was just the highest paying uh, city at the moment with the lowest, um, per, you know what I mean? Like, um, I'm, uh, what is it? Lowest cost of living per se. You know what I mean? Like it was just, uh. I, that was back then and things have changed dramatically you know what i mean like by the time i left but that was my thing there and so yeah i mean you know basically i did that for a while and then i went to this other place by the way i know i'm going long here but i went to this other place maybe, maybe, uh, yeah we only have an hour before the other people coming in so. oh. <laughs> this is, i'm in the dining hall right now yeah oh. okay hi everybody oh no oh, nobody's there oh, okay. we're not leaving yet but uh, yeah this we is got one that deep yeah, we got a uh, half hour, but yeah. So you uh, so from Seattle? Yeah, yeah. So, then, uh, yeah. Basically, then I left and I worked at this other place called the Harvest Vine. And uh, that place was awesome. You know what I mean? It was like a Spanish tapas restaurant. It was a restaurant where I was cooking and it was like a bar, you know, meaning that I was cooking and I was talking to people. You know what I mean? I was interacting like a bartender with people. And I, I would have people like Charles, uh, was it? Yeah, uh, Charles Schultz? Schultz? Charles Schultz? I don't know what uh, the fuck. Is, uh, you know, the guy from uh, Starbucks, the Starbucks guy and other people like him, you know, like the celebrities from Seattle, you know, used to come there and sit with me. And uh, and I used to serve them and stuff like that, because, again, I don't even know who the fuck I was. I, you know, this is like one of the richest guys in the world. And I'm like, they're treating him like I'm treating you. You know what I mean? Just talking to him like mm -hmm. that. So that's why he would sit with me while everybody else would treat him like a like a celebrity. And to me, I come from fucking Miami, bro. Well, then you just make some coffee and, you know, have a couple million bucks, bro. Who gives a fuck, you know? <laughs> like, you know, just like everybody else I know. You know? <laughs> And so I would talk to him like that. I would just like the whole thing. And, you know, it was cool. So like in him and others. And so, you know, I had my fans, I guess, my friends in Seattle. But, you know, Seattle was a little different. You know what I mean? Where a lot of that was not welcome. Everybody there was very distant. You know, a lot of, you know, social. You know, I'm a Hispanic guy, you know, very loud, talk a lot. You know, the whole thing. And I go to Seattle, which is a city where everybody, you know, is already, you know, they've been doing social distancing thing, you know, before. You know? Yeah. They're kind of lethargic and on riddling most of them, yeah. Yeah, and it is what it is, man. You know, hey, whatever. Everybody is on fucking cocaine and Cuban coffee in Miami. Back you know? yeah, yeah, that was, that was, uh, yeah, that was a big thing in Miami and in uh, Seattle back in the eighties and, and nineties. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, so then you, uh, so you Miami, you know, big thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh yeah, also introduced behind you, by the way. Some people have uh, talked about it. Oh, Mr. Uh, oh, Mr. Lambo. Yeah, he's uh, my Mexican horse that uh, you know I found out here um, abandoned. Uh, some some really horrible person abandoned him and uh, left him for dead. And I found him on the street, and now he's he's been part of the show for a long time. He doesn't make that many appearances now because I'm just doing all kinds of shit. But 
it's a great thing that you brought him up because he's going to start making more appearances now. Now that I'm kind of like in quarantine, like everybody else, and you know, we got I got to start making more uh, standalone episodes and shit like that. But yeah, um, but yeah, hi Lambo. And yeah, I don't have it right now because I've been uh, running like crazy. But uh, multi-millionaire Miller Military has been saying, yeah, put his link in the in the. Uh, Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. As soon as we finish, I'm going to get your uh, different pages. And I'm yeah. Well, well, but how about this? To make it easy on everybody. Well, here. Yeah, yeah. To make it easy on everybody that, that wants to find me, it's just basically JoseAdiaga.com. Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah, 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 yeah. Jose R. Oh, no. uh, yeah. I got. I'm worse than that virus, bro. I'm I'm spreading like all over the place, bro. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, oh there you go. Oh cool, thanks. All right, but uh, but yeah. So I mean, you know, I was working at that job, and I, and to me at that point, I thought, oh wow, this is my dream job. You know, I, I didn't want to be a chef anymore. I was getting paid big bucks to just be a cook. You know, to just do whatever. You know, there was other cooks there that were, you know, they couldn't handle it. And to me, I was like, bro, this is nothing, man. You know what I mean? You know, when I used to work, I used to feed thousands and thousands of people a day. I'm just feeding a few hundred now. You know what I mean? Like, get out of here. You know, so to me, it was, a, it was a fabulous job. It was great. You know, the people loved me. It was awesome. It was awesome. Until I found out that they didn't love me. It was just, uh, you know, like I think a lot of people did love me, but like my boss and others and other and a few other people like uh, that were his buddies didn't like me because I found out, you know, which, you know, it's pretty obvious, but basically I was taking the spotlight. Remember, you know, it's uh, people were walking in the restaurant and immediately boom. Hi, it's me. You know what I mean? And so a lot of people thought that I owned the restaurant, that I was the fucking face of the place. That I, okay. And so they just started rubbing a few people the wrong way. I had no idea. And, you know, before I knew it, you're fired. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck? You know, I mean, I kind of thought coming, but whatever. It's a long story. I'm not going to try to hurry this up. So I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Who cares? I'm done. You know what I mean? If I can't do it here, if I can't, whatever, I guess this is not for me. I've given it all my all in this industry. Now. I'm in Seattle. They just made they, they just made the, the green stuff legal. So I was mm-hmm. like, you know what? Let me see what I can do here. I'm from Miami. Business, you know, Scarface, you know, that whole fucking middleman thing, whatever. You know what I mean? So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let me come up here and see what's going on. Everything. I mean, you know, I, I got had, had a few bucks saved up because, hey, I was finally working a great job. So I got fired. I'm like, eh. Whatever, suck it. You know what I mean? Like whatever. <laughs> you know, I was living with some chick at the time. She was like, "Oh, don't worry, Jose." Oh, blah 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 blah. And so I was like, "Whatever." But immediately, the, the moment I got fired, I went home that day, and I was already working. And again, just long story short, I got in that industry because it was legal for me to do so. And uh, you know, up until it was illegal, meaning that you know you had to have a special license, you had to be, uh, 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 you know, to the government and all that shit. And so by that time, you know, I had to get the fuck out. Like a, like a lot of small businesses, you know, that happens, you know, all across the board and you know every industry. So you know, up until that point, though, I was, you know, being able to, I was able to take advantage of that situation to help other people build their business. I had my own, and you know, just so on and so forth. And I built a lot of wealth. And so then, you know, on, on top of that, that wealth. You know, um, was not just money. You know, it wasn't just that I was like I had a lot of silver or gold or Bitcoin. No, 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 no. It was basically wealth and, and knowledge. Mm-hmm. Because the first time in my life, I had a lot of time. You know, even though I was working very hard, I wasn't working. You know, like I didn't have to like do the routine. You know what I mean? Like wake up, take a shower, get dressed, go to work. Blah. You know that whole thing. I was on my own schedule for reals. And it wasn't like when I was doing my businesses where I was like, you know, again doing something like uh, physical with the kitchen and all that shit. It was a very different. It was like, like me and kind of like the computer, a few clients here and there, whatever. So that basically, you know, bought me a lot of time. And so then I started going down the rabbit hole. I literally started going down the rabbit hole. I started watching a bunch of YouTube videos. I started educating myself on what is money, what is currency, what is, you know, really going on behind the scenes. Yada yada yada. All right. Henceforth, you know, I got the fucking tinfoil hat. Anyways, yeah, but here's the thing. Uh, we're gonna have to uh, end this for the time being. Oh, oh no, uh, was I went too we'll long? Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to go too long. I apologize for that, man. You know, they, they need to have this uh, uh, for a meeting in here, so sure. I don't want to. Uh, oh, can uh, we? Can you, can you can't move. Can you move elsewhere, or we're kind of stuck here? 
Uh, all right, so you want, you want to just end it? Oh, why don't we do a part two? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, audience, the audience was very interested, and I am too about the story. So we're going to part here. We're going to pause here, and then next we'll figure out when the next part two will be. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you let me know, and we can schedule it, and we can go from there, and we'll leave people on the uh, – what is it? On the cliffhanger, right? Uh, yeah, definitely. All right. And on that note, we'll see you soon. Bye. All right. As you guys uh, saw there, um, we had to end the first part of the interview um, because of technical difficulties, but um, we got to record part two, and uh, here is part two. Uh, and, and we're live. Hello, everybody. This is James Ben of the Cali Picker, and again, today we have Jose Artiaga. Uh, we uh, were interrupted last time by not his uh, police, but my police here. And I had to cut off the interview. So this is part two. We left off where uh, Jose was uh, uh, leaving Miami and went up to Seattle. And that's where we'll go to. So, uh, so yeah, what happened when uh, when you got uh, uh, let go from, from Miami? Well, um, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, it wasn't that I got let go in Miami. It was more like um, I left. I just quit. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know... Uh, yeah, as far, what, I, what I remember was uh, basically I was uh, on my way to work or some shit like that, and I got a flat tire, and I was working two jobs, you know, trying to just do as much as I can, you know, working two jobs, another side job, trying to bring as much money in, not enough money was coming in, everything was just, again, you know, just the shit pile, I'm sorry, uh, can I say whatever? Okay, it was all, with all that stuff was just piling one thing on top of, you, uh, you know, everything was just piling on top. And so now that's when I, I figured out, I was like, man, if I can't even fix a flat tire, if I can't even afford to fix a flat tire in, in this state, I mean, you know, what hope do I have for anything else? And so that's when I just decided, all right, let me just, uh, you know, figure out a way to pick up and get the hell out of here. And, uh, you know, I had a girlfriend at the time and, uh, you know, uh, we were, you know, together for a while, but we were a little bit on and off, on and off at that point because, you know, um, all of, you know, I lost everything. I was kind of like uh, relegated to like living in a box type of situation. You know, she had to leave. You know how these things are. <laughs> boom, boom. Anyways, um, <laughs> so then you know, as I was getting my shit back together and all that stuff. You know, where you know we're talking again, hanging out again, and then I was just like, hey, I'm thinking about moving to Seattle. What do you think? One of you, you know, uh, this is your idea. Remember, because I had gone vacation with her to Seattle before, and I've been there, so. Um, I go, hey, let's uh, let's just go. Let's just move. You know, she was in a similar situation. And we're like, okay, boom, we're about to leave. And then, um, yeah, you know, fast forward to the day we had to leave. She, I'm, if I'm trying to fast forward to the story. It's a huge story, long story. But she left me at the airport, all right? She basically just left no me way. at the airport. Yeah, yeah. So she took me to the airport and then said, and I thought, you know, I'm like, hey, you're not, what's going on? You know, she's like, no, I'm not going. I can't leave. You know, my parents, my this, my whatever. Yada, yada, yada. So, I'm, you know, I put on my big boy pants and I'm like, all right, bye. You know what I mean? Whatever. What are we going to, you know, what can I do? I was a little I was heartbroken. I mean, that was like the last nail on the coffin. I mean, late, literally. Um, and that's it. I just, I fucking left to Seattle and um, I got to Seattle and I started working in Seattle. You know, um, I, I think I talked a little bit. I talked, I worked at the Celtic Swell. You know what I mean? Like that, that yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that little um, Irish pub type of place and then you know i worked at a few places there until eventually i went to this place called i mean i'll say whatever it was called the harvest vine by the way i to me it's still my opinion like uh i think that's probably one of the best if not the best restaurants in seattle for sure you know what i mean but you know that's just my biased opinion um and i worked there for a while and everything was great and wonderful i was enjoying my my time there but you know then life happened again and that's where i got fired you know i got fired there because i did not fit there mold you know i i later found out that nobody fit their mold you know they have a huge revolving doors with with coats and shit like that but you know to me i, I was just like anyone else there, you know what i mean like they um they ran that little kitchen a little different than other kitchens but at the, at the end of the day it was the same shit and um i just didn't fit in i mean i mean i am who i am the guy you're seeing right now is basically the guy that i've always been i've, I've been a little bit you know maybe more hot-headed a little bit more aggressive you know at a younger yeah. age like a lot yeah. of us but, you know, other than that, you know, pretty much the same guy, you know, tell you the truth, tell you to your face, you know, get to work, no excuses, you know, that kind of guy. But when I got to Seattle, things were a little different than the way I was raised. You know, things were a little bit more 
chill, more nonchalant, you know, like that whole thing. And so I, I didn't fit that mold in that sense because I was, you know, too hard working. I mean, basically, that's what they told me. You work too hard. You make others look bad. I'm like, how, how am I? You know what I mean? Like, you know, what, you know, anyways. So once I got fired from that place, I was, was like, well, fuck it. You know, maybe I need to not just change my location, but change careers. You know, let me what else can I do out here? And so, I mean, you know, I haven't really talked much about it. You know, I don't talk too much about this, but, you know, basically when I got up there, it was just um, the, the gray, the gray area in between um, what was going on with the marijuana laws. OK, up in Seattle. So, you know, basically, I just got involved with that. You know, what I mean, I wasn't doing anything illegal. You know what I mean? So I go, well, fuck it. I'm from Miami. You know what I mean? I know how this shit runs. You know what I mean? I know what to do out here. So I was like, fuck it. You know, plus I came from the restaurant business. So I just basically became a consultant. I started doing a little, you know, a few things here on my own, you know, making money and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Before I knew it, I was making a lot of money. You know what I mean? And again, I was just making a lot of money the legal way. You know, you know how like a lawyer makes it or a consultant makes mm -hmm. it or anything like that. You know, I had, uh, which is basically what I do now too. I, I mean, I still do consulting, but Again, very different now. And it's like I help people move to, to this location. Back then, I was helping people, you know, set up a business. I was helping people, you know what I mean? Like, hey, how to set up a delivery service? How do I, you know, whatever. You know what I mean, just, you know, basic stuff that, I mean, I, I took for granted because it was stuff that I was doing for, for a long time. But a lot of people just, you know, a lot of people just didn't know. They wanted to put a business, but they didn't know what all that entailed. You know, what, what, uh, what an actual. So, you know, I did that for a while. It went really well. Until they started passing the laws in Seattle, you know what I mean, in that area, um, for the legalization. So at that point, it was just basically, well, you need a license, you need a this, you need a that, you need. And so I was like, okay, great, I'm in a position where I can afford these things. Let me see if I can pursue them. And then I quickly found out that no, 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 the only one that can get a license is like, are you friends with the politician? Are you, you know what I mean? Da, 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 da. Are you sucking on this? Are you doing that? Are you okay? If so, okay, you get a license. Oh, you're just a regular business person that knows how to, oh, no, sorry, sorry, you're not welcome here. But, oh, you're from Miami? Get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, real quickly, you know what I mean? I got hit with that reality, but, you know, whatever. It wasn't like a major hit to me. It was the, the major hit was more like, well, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, I'm not going to get in this. I don't want to be in this world. It's not what I do. Um, I, I love cooking, but I didn't want to go back to the kitchen. And I was just like combating that thing in my head, you know, that midlife crisis a lot of people have. What am I going to do? You know what I mean? I don't want to go back to the kitchen. I don't want to do consulting. I like smoking the shit. I don't like selling it. You know what I mean? I don't like being part of okay. it. Yeah. yeah, whatever. That whole thing. And so it's like, yeah, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then, you know, I, I, I back in Seattle, I had a lot of friends that were in the arts. You know what I mean? Like, I, there's a lot of art, you know, West Coast, you know, okay. A lot of artists. And so I, a lot of my friends were like, you know, uh, audio visual guy, photographer, an artist. Uh, and then I started getting into that world and I realized, oh, shit, wait a minute. This is what I love. This is the world I really love. How do I get involved? You know what I mean? And so that was my thing. So how do I what do I do here? I'm not an artist. I didn't know how to art. You know what I mean? I don't know how to do any of that shit. But I was that one guy, you know, what I mean, that had, you know, I wore a nice little suit. I had a few bucks. You know, I was welcome in that world very quickly, very easily. But then I realized I don't want to be that guy. You know what I mean? I want to. I want to create. I want to be one of these guys. You know what I mean? I want to be the artist. I want to be hanging out with the art chick. I want to be hanging out with the art dudes. You know, doing this shit. Okay. And um, yeah, basically one of my friends, um, my best friend ever. I'm sure you guys have seen him in other videos or another whatever. The big gargantuan guy, Abe. Yeah, he. You know, he he was into arts. You know, arts or audio visual stuff. And he one day said, "Hey, can you help me out? I'm, I'm trying to film something. Can you help me with the camera?" I said, yeah, sure, no problem. I went to help him out, played with the camera a bit. And before I knew it, like immediately I fell in love again. You know, like, uh, you know, I, I felt like a, like when I was eight years old playing with my Legos. You know what I mean? Like I just did not want to stop. Wanted to play all the way through the night, you know, wake up in the morning, play with the Legos again, you know, just constantly like that. And, send, and so, you know, not only was I feeling that when I was filming, but then when we got back, he's like, OK, we got to edit this. Let me, let's, uh, you know, let, and I go, okay, can I learn? Can you show me? And then again, as soon as I was just like, you know, I took over the computer and I was like editing and he was just telling me what to do. And I was like, oh, wow. I mean, I love this. And then he was telling me, hey, you're really good at this. You know, wow, you have a, like a natural knack for this. I mean, you, have you, are you sure you never done this? I'm like, yeah, I've never done this, you know, uh, but I have, you know, when I was younger, 
back in the VHS days, I used to be in this world. You know what I mean? I used to always have like a VHS tapes and like uh, record things on TV, you know, make my own compilation videos before there were compilation videos. You get what I'm saying? Like um, on YouTube and shit like that. So I used to do a lot of that stuff. And um, I used to like basically get the tapes and, um, you know, edit them. You know, um, I have like a, like, you know, sometimes, you know, when you, you would use a tape more than once, it would like mess it up. Right. Mm -hmm. So like I would have to um, sometimes even like, um, you know, the tape would break and I would have to get like masking tape and, uh, you know, what is it? Do I have masking tape? You know, you know, masking tape, the invisible tape, you know, what I mean? the tape yeah, 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 to yeah. try to record it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so like I used to do all that shit and I used to have a lot of fun doing that. But my family being as con you know conservative, you know, that they were, you know, Latin conservative, you know, like like, like, a, like an Asian family. No, you cannot be an artist. You have to be, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you have to do uh, some traditional job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so to me, you know, I was very intelligent. Like I was, you know, I had like full paid scholarships, you know, to, to go to, you know, University of Florida, you know, a bunch of shit, you know? And so, but I was like, I don't want to be a doctor. I don't want to be a lawyer. I don't want to be any of these fucking things. You know what I mean? But then um, I was involved in the kitchen from an even younger age, you know, with my family and stuff like that. So I go, well, fuck it. I'll be a chef. You know, I was already working as a bus boy and stuff like that, like at 17, you know, and so I was like, whatever. I like this world. I love the world of the kitchen. Anyone that's worked in a restaurant, you know what I mean? So I was like, well, fuck it. I fit in this world, you know, for sure. I fit in the, in the into this uh, restaurant world. I'm not going to fit in with the politics, you know, to me. I was just not going to fit into anything else. So and I, I told my dad, hey, would it be cool, you know, if I studied to be a chef and became a chef? And my dad was like, yeah, you know what I mean? Just do something, you know what I mean? Do something in which you can at least no matter what fall back on, you have a career, you have a job, you know? And it's true because right now, no matter how bad it gets, I can go cook or I can cook something here and sell it. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a skill that has been beyond invaluable, you know, Be, not just the cooking, but the leadership and all these things that came with it, the business, you know, how the fuck would I be a consultant or do anything like that if I did not know how to make money in the hardest industry to make money in, which is the restaurant industry, you know? All right. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Basically, um, where did I go? I'm sorry, I went off on a tangent. Yeah, so they told me, you know, I forget, where was I? Uh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. You're in Seattle and, and uh, yeah. uh, started as a, as a cook. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so I left. Okay, so I, I, I mean, basically, um, I, I wasn't in that industry, the, the weed industry anymore. I didn't want to be a cook anymore. But then I had the camera and I had a few bucks in the bank. So I was like, well, what am I going to do with this? And so I just started doing YouTube. You know what I mean? I just started doing like a YouTube videos. This is in 2015. And I just started doing like vlogs. You know what I mean? Like, do you know Casey Neistat? Have you ever seen or heard of Casey Neistat? I know the name. It sounds really familiar. I'm well, sure I did. I mean, now it's become kind of mainstream. But back then, you know, um, people that did like a, a life vlog or a daily vlog or some sort of vlog like that, that wasn't like a thing yet. And then on top of that, like, you know, a, I'm, you know, there's two types of vlogs. You know, the vlogs where I'm just standing here, like what we're doing, talking. Okay, that was the only thing that existed. But what he did was that he, you know, he had background in, in film. And so what he did is like, well, you know what? I have the opportunity now because of YouTube to make a mini movie, a mini film every day. And so what he would do is he would film his day, but do it like from like a film perspective. You know what I mean? Yeah, like right. again, just imagine like the most mundane thing that you would do today, but if you film it like a scene from a movie, man, that shit looks exciting. You get what I mean? You know what I mean? Like you're mm -hmm. brushing your teeth, you know, the angle, you see the camera. It's, you know what I mean? It's, you know, you're putting the toothpaste on. Okay, okay. All the close-ups, all the fucking dramatic. Okay. So then I looked at that and I go, well, okay. I, I see what he's doing. I love what he's doing. Let me do that. You know what I mean? Like, fuck it. Why not? You know what I mean, let me do that. And so I started doing that. And in fact, I look at some of those first videos that I did today and I'm like, fuck. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, I, how do I say? I don't do that now because I'm doing something completely different. But I'm look, I look at that. I'm like, wow, bro. You know what I mean? Like, holy shit. You had such vision, such talent, such all of these fucking things. And you were just, you know, playing with the camera. You weren't, you know, I was just, I'm talking to myself here. So. You know, at the end of the day, you know, as I was doing these vlogs and I was doing all that stuff, all I all I knew, all I realized was that I, I, I loved doing that. You know what I mean? I loved creating. I loved uh, the uploading, you know, to YouTube. I loved uh, everything. The only thing I was not getting was uh, I, I didn't get any subscribers. I didn't get any people viewing. I didn't get any of that shit. But I still kept doing it because it was just something that felt right. It just felt correct. 
Um, and I did that for a while until I did it. I kind of just, you know, said, fuck it. I don't want to do this anymore. And I, I kind of fell away from that. You know what I mean? Like, it was just more like uh, I had things, personal things in my life. You know what I mean? And it was just like, yeah, I'm going to put this on, 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 on hold for a minute. I had to leave Seattle. And so I was like, you know what? What am I going to do? So I go, you know what? Fuck it. I got I got money. Let me travel the U.S. And so then all of a sudden, like, I, I spent many, many months just travel. And what do I mean? I was just driving back and forth, back. And, you know, just, I don't know, in a sense, like, I didn't know what I was doing then as I think about it now, you know, and, and then, you know, in this uh, present tense moment, you know, and, and other times I thought about it, it was just like, that was a very physical, um, you know, uh, iteration of uh, what I was thinking. I was like, basically wandering around aimlessly, you know, and, and I, and I did it in a, in a, in a, and, and again, a very visceral, very, um, you know, physical way in the sense of like, I, you know, some people just run around aimlessly in their head. No, I basically got in my car and ran around aimlessly around the U.S., you know what I mean, countless times. That's why I, you know, I've gotten to see most of the U.S. because I was just like, all right, we're going to go to fucking New York. All right, we're going back to Miami. All right, we're going to go to Vegas, you know, like like that, just crossing the country, you know. And um, it was cool. It was interesting. I took a little bit of film and pictures, but very minor. At that point, I didn't want to do that. I don't know. I just didn't want to do anything of that. I guess I was going through some shit there. I don't know. But I did get to experience a lot of really cool stuff. You know what I mean? I really get. I got to see a lot of really cool things. I got to, you know, conquer demons. You know what I mean? Like all these things. And like, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? I just, I, I put all that shit on hold. I, I mean, I stopped making videos for like over a year, two years. I don't know. Until I had a situation where on one of my cross-country trips, I crossed through the wrong part of Texas. And again, very long story short, I got wrongfully arrested. I got wrongfully detained. And if it wasn't for the money that I had in my bank, if it wasn't for my American Express, if it wasn't for a few of those things, I'd probably be still be in jail right now for nothing. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, just another st statistic. You know what I mean? They would have made me fucking disappear and lost, you know, again, for nothing. But because I had money and I had a, a little bit of power left, you know, at that point, I was able to buy my freedom. But, you know, again, I, you know, I, I lost it all. I, I literally lost it all in the process and then after that and all that shit. And uh, after that happened, after I lost everything, um, you know, again, fast forward, I ended up in, in, in Los Angeles, you know. Um, back then, I was thinking, well, fuck it. I want to go to Mexico. I'm getting out of here. Fuck this shit. But my friends and my family and all my loved ones were like, no, 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 no. Don't leave. You know, stay here. You know, a lot of people in Los Angeles, a lot of my friends are like, no, no, here. You can stay on this couch. You can stay over here. You can do that, whatever. I ended up just sleeping on the couch for like a few weeks, like not even a month, just a few weeks. And be by, by you know, I got my shit together and boom, I was already in like, a, you know, in an apartment type situation, you know, living with roommates and that whole thing in LA. And, um, yeah, man, you know, again, again, that, this is the second time in this story already that I've, you know, dropped to the bottom. You know what I mean? Was at the top dropped straight to the bottom. And, um, you know, basically the night that I was sitting in jail that I already knew that my life was going to be turned upside down from here on end, you know, I was sitting there and I was smiling because up until that point I was wondering aimlessly, without direction. The minute that that happened, it's not necessarily that I had direction, but I, I just knew that things were going to be different from this point on. <laughs> CIA. There, they found me. Continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, and I knew things were going to be different from that moment on. In fact, my first night in jail, I was just there in bed with a with a fucking smile on my face. You know what I mean? Like I slept like a baby. You remember, like in my cousin Vinny. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, by the way, by the way, my problem was with the cops. Dude, you should have seen me, bro. You know what I mean? When they were throwing me in jail, I was like, man, motherfuckers, I'm going to fucking kill you. Wait till I get my lawyer. <laughs> and like, and then all of a sudden, like I saw like some guys that grabbed me and I just think it was more cops and it was the, the, the people in the cell. And then like, bro, calm down. Are you all right? Hey, whatever. You know what I mean? Like that. They were like, they were scared. You know what I mean? Like they were scared of me as I was going in the jail. <laughs> It, I mean, yeah, I guess it was kind of like, uh, uh, you know, the, lifted off your shoulders, you know, hey, you know what, this has happened now, now I, I have freedom to do what you want. Yeah, in a sense, yeah, I mean, basically, uh, yeah, you know what I mean, like, uh, the reason I stopped doing YouTube and I stopped doing a lot of things and I was wondering aimlessly was because, as crazy as it sounds, I was scared of losing everything. Then, I lost everything. 
And then all of a sudden that fear disappeared. Right. And then, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. And so these are the things I've learned, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, that's why now, you know what I mean? Like you see me even more fearless, you know what I mean? As I'm even getting a little bit more, I'm not shutting up. I'm not anything. I'm, I'm still going, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I've learned my lesson. You know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, you know, if you, th- if you're going to, if you put that thing into the universe, I'm going to lose it. I'm not going to have anything. I have no, it's gone. If you put it into the universe, I have plenty. I'm going to have more. This is going to be, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be on top of the fucking mountain. Guess what? All that, that's going to happen. You know what I mean? For reals. And um, this is the reality of it. And uh, I don't know how else to explain it to you, except do it. You know what I mean? To the people out there listening, watching. But, you know, back to, to, to that night, you know what I mean? And then not just that night, but then, you know, when I started going back to towards LA, I had to stop by Vegas. I was staying in Vegas for a little bit and I had stuff there. When I got to Vegas, I don't know how, but somebody found my stuff, my stash, gone. So not only was a lot of shit gone after the Texas situation, but I had a few, you know, coins, money, whatever. And when I went to go retrieve those, also gone. Mm. Yeah, I know, right? And then started making, if you think, you know, you think I'm paranoid now. You shouldn't have seen me then. You know, it's like, who the fuck you? Holiday, whatever. Why? You know what I mean? I was just like really like, holy shit. You know what I mean? Like. Who's tracking me? How do they know? You know what I mean? Like nobody knew. Nobody knew about, you know, and so there was just one thing after another like that. And so I'm thinking, you know, the obvious thing is like you start, most people could, would start going crazy. You know what I mean? Like what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like they're really, am I that much of a target that they're doing all these fucking things to me? Um, but then, you know, as time goes on, like especially now, you know what I mean? Like thinking here with a little more straight mind, you know, uh, by the way, shout out to Opie and shout out to everybody out there. I don't know who's watching. I'm like, uh, but anyways, um, you know, now when I'm thinking with a little bit more of a, you know, a clear mind or whatever, I realize that no, you know, all that happened because I put all that into the universe. That's what happened. That's it. You know what I mean? It's as simple as that. And I can fucking sit here all day long. You know what I mean? And uh, pretend like, oh, I'm an FBI agent or this or that or that. But I can also sit here, look in the motherfucking mirror, be honest with myself, all right, and be like, no, you lost this because. Maybe when you talk to this guy or did this, you know what I mean? You fucked this up and you did this and you did that. And then again, you know, just being 100% honest with yourself. You fuck, And most of us realize, like, fuck, I fucked up. You know what I mean? That's basically it. Yeah, you know, exactly. What yeah, you know, you, I, I shouldn't have done this and I shouldn't have let, put this here. And, and, yeah, they found it. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and basically, you know, that's what happens. You know what I mean? Like um, when a lot of these when, – when your world crumbles, it's very easy to blame everyone and blame others. But then – when you sit there with a clear head and you're honest with yourself, you really realize that, you know, a lot of this stuff was to your fault. And look, shit happened, man. You know, like it was a perfect storm of shit that hit me, you know. But mm-hmm. again, you know what I mean? I made my own bed. You know what I mean? It's as simple as that. You know what I mean? I knew that I was already in a world of shit, you know, to quote, uh, right? Uh, uh, full metal jacket, right? You know, I was in a world of shit and basically making decisions under a polluted toxic mind, you know, that I didn't know was that polluted. And uh, that's what caused me to make so many mistakes. And then, boom, you know what I mean? Like it all just fucking the perfect storm, you know, everything just fucking hit. And then, yeah, you know what I mean? It was very easy, very, very easy to fucking say, oh, you know, some government entities after me or some fucking guy I did business with did this to me or that. But the reality is, is like, you know, I dissect everything, you know, just like, again, I, 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 that's why I implore everybody to be honest with themselves more than anything else. Because, again, once you really look down and deep inside, you're like, fuck, man, I, I, all this was my fuck up, plain and simple. So what am I going to do? Am I going to learn from this or am I going to fucking sit here and bitch like a little, you know, bitch all day long? You know what I mean? And I, I don't. You know what I mean, I, I've uh, I've actually as you guys, you guys know that you guys that know me know that I've turned all this into a positive. I, I mean, I'm, you know, everything from doing Monday motivation to doing the videos that I do to, to whatever, you know what I mean? Everything, everything that I do now is all because of the mistakes that I made, you know what I mean? And like how I learned from them, how I grew from them, how I can not just help myself, help everybody out there, you know what I mean? Or anyone that wants, you know, some sort of, I don't know, sometimes you just need to talk, you know what I mean? It's not like I'm fucking sitting here pretending I'm a, you know what I mean? Like Mr. Know-it-all or anything like that. And in fact, the one thing I know is I don't know, I don't know shit, all right? But um, yeah, so look, again, fast forward to, to, to that. So like I ended up in Los Angeles and I go, well, fuck it. You know what I mean? I already know I got to start over from the beginning. Um, what am I going to do? Well, at least I, dis- I already have something I love. You know what I mean? I'm trying to fast forward. I got your lunch for you. Bring my lunch. Nice. Lunch time. You just drink it hot or 
glass? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you, Tina. You're very welcome. Now, are you able to open your milk and your packets okay? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. And you said black. Awesome, man. Look at that. A dinner yeah. and a movie, huh? <laughs> yeah. I wonder what's for lunch. Here, show us. Show us what's for lunch while I uh, take a little smoke break while you're... <laughs> Let's make this entertaining. Oh, look at that. That's actually pretty good. That's exactly what I had for dinner last night. Look at uh, that. Hot dog, I, think, I think it's sauerkraut and... Uh, uh, I don't think it's sauerkraut. I think nah. that's just onion and green pepper that you could put on it if you want, but it's a kielbasa and um, you got mustard and ketchup and a relish over there if you I'll want. Put some sugar on it too. Yeah. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> Why not? There's your coffee. Thank you. You're welcome. And you got your milk, okay? Yep. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Have a good time. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, Ben. Because like every uh, hospital, every region like gets like you know regional stuff. So like out there, kielbasa, right? That's like a thing. You guys eat that a lot out there, right? No. Oh, you don't? <laughs> oh, I thought you're in. I thought you're in the Midwest or something. I don't. Is that usually a thing here? I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not originally from here. So well, I mean, because like in the homes, you know, like in homes or hospitals or shit like that. Back in the back in Florida, like in Miami, you know, they're giving you like rice, black, you know, white rice and black beans and like some sort of plant. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's fucking cool. That might be better than this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and these are yams. Oh, sweet potato fries. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. Tasteless, but yeah. Oh, okay. Well, a, little, a little salt, a little salt, you know. Or I, I don't want salt. <laughs> I'll put relish on. That'll help. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. So yeah, where was I? Where were? Um, oh yeah. So yeah, I, I ended up in LA, and um, I said, well, fuck it. You know what I mean? To myself, I, okay, I got to rebuild. I got to redo this whole thing. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm at the very least. I have something that I love. You get what I'm saying? Which is, um, you know, my new. Well, actually, I didn't even know that yet because I remember I was still not doing art. You know what I mean? I, was, I, I had gone away from that. But I said to myself, well, fuck it. You know what I mean? I'm in, I'm in L.A. You know, I don't want to go back to Miami. I don't want to go back to anything. My only choice was going to Mexico back then. But I go, well, I, I was still too scared to go to Mexico. I'll be honest. You know what I mean? I was still too, you know, I didn't. I thought that I didn't have enough resources. Okay. By the way, I ended up coming out here with 1,500, remember. But back then, I actually had more resources, right? I had like 20 grand. You know what I mean? So I was like, imagine. You know what I mean? Like that's true. You know what I mean? Like, but I thought, no, man, 20 grand is not enough. You know, what am I going to do when I get out here? And then, you know, blah, 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 you know, all these things that we, you know, we all ask ourselves and talk our way out of it, you know? So I ended up spending that money on my lawyer and my freedom, which again, still wasn't enough is I still had to, you know, go out there and work, you know, again, LA. So how much, you know, things are expensive, you know, rent, you name it. So at that point, I was like, well, fuck it. I'll start doing Uber. So I started doing Uber and, um, you know, I was trying to just get by. I was doing a bunch of side jobs. Oh, yeah, I remember, like, immediately, a month. Man, you know what? Um, I don't know if I can show it here. I, I can't show it. I, I mean, but, I, like, basically, a month after I got arrested and my life changed completely, and I went and I was in Seattle. I mean, I was in L.A., and I was already with my roommates, my brand-new roommates, about a week and to me living there, I asked my roommate, hey, do, can I make, do, would you be interested in making a video? You know, because we were all potheads, you know, we were smoked. So I go, hey, would you like to make a, make a video? I, I mean, look, let, let me show you what I do already because I already made some videos. I had like a couple clients, you know, just bullshit, you know, just uh, the preliminary stuff to start a business. You know, I've already done this before. So I already, okay. So I was like, well, fuck it. You know what I mean? I'm thinking to myself, well, I can make this video. It'll give me some practice. It'll get my head out of, you know, all the things that are really going on. Um, it'll give me something fun to do. Um, and also, again, um, I'm in LA, you know, so maybe I can use this video later on to shop it around to other weed shops and be like, hey, you know what I mean? Like, uh, um, I can make an advertisement for you or I can make some Instagram video for you, whatever. So I made a video with my roommate on how to roll a blunt. And I made a really, art I don't know if you've seen it or not. I made a really, okay, a really artistic, you know, video. That was a month after my life had changed. So think about that. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, even I like was very... Like, wow, you know what I mean? As I was doing it, thinking to myself, like, holy shit, you know what I mean? Like, that's how much you love this, you know what I mean? Like, that's how much this is, like, now really changing your life where, in a sense, you know what I mean? It's, it's like the only piece that you're kind of finding out of this, all this chaos and all this insanity that you're going through right now is that you just want to make a video. You're, you're, you are know what I mean? You're wasting your time on this because that took a lot of time to make and, and edit and everything, but 
That's just the only thing I wanted to do. So I did that. Then I did like a, 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 another friend of mine said, hey, I got a, I got a, fr a friend that lives in Vegas. She has like um, some tarot card stuff, you know what I mean, whatever. Um, she wants to do like a commercial. Can you do some stop motion video? And I'm like, stop motion video? What the fuck are you doing? Like, I don't know anything about that shit. But, I, I, but the businessman, to me, I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, I can do it. Don't worry about it. Yo, tell her to call me, da, 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 da. And I learned how to do stop motion video, you know what I mean? Like a stop motion, like actual thing, you know? Um, and I was just kept doing that, but it wasn't enough to pay the bills. You know what I mean, it was enough to, you know, hey, I got 300 bucks from a job here. I did the Uber. You know, I had a couple bucks I had saved up from my Bitcoin. Boom, boom, boom. I made ends meet. But I knew that that wasn't going to be sustainable for too long. But I figured, well, it's going to be sustainable enough. You know, I, I my, my, my business is going to grow. I'm here in Hollywood. I can make it happen. You know, blah, blah, blah. And, and sure enough, sure enough, you know what I mean? I was actually doing pretty good. I got a few clients, you know, I was on the, I was on uh, fucking Craigslist, you know, I was out there cranking it out, you know what I mean? I was hustling. I was living the fucking Hollywood dream. I didn't want to be Hollywood, though, you know what I mean? And that's the thing. Yeah. I didn't want to be in Hollywood. I didn't want to be out there. I mean, I, I, I loved LA, but it wasn't like, I didn't go to LA to, you know, a, 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 you know, accomplish this fucking dream of Hollywood. That, that's not, in fact, I wanted to do the opposite. I wanted to accomplish my dream of, uh, you know, making, uh, being a small filmmaker, whatever, not getting involved with Hollywood. In fact, being, you know, so it's good at yeah. that Hollywood would, would come knocking on my door. You know what I mean? You know, I, I, I know how to play the game and I go, fuck it. I mean, I know what I want out of my life. So that's what I, that's what I was, you know, planning on doing. And, um, and it was actually going pretty well. You know what I mean? I was, I was actually doing stuff. It was going, you know, relatively well. When I was doing the Uber stuff every once in a while, I would get like, you know, somebody in there, you know what I mean? That was uh, in the business and it would just start up a conversation. I was, I was the ideal Uber driver. I would just shut the fuck up and take you to your place. You know what I mean? Play my music, shut up. I didn't interact. But, you know, Hollywood, the way it is, there's a lot of people who like to talk. And sometimes I was playing podcasts and people were talking to me. And you know me. You say one word to me, I don't shut the fuck up. And um, I made a lot of friends in L.A., man. I made a lot of fucking friends in L.A. and a lot of friends in high places. And these motherfuckers were offering me shit. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't want to I don't want to go do what you're doing, bro. You know what I mean? It's like, well, damn, but you got talent. Well, you got this. You got that. And so all of a sudden, I had a lot of people that were in that world that knew what the fuck they were talking about. And they were telling me I was really good. So I was like, well, I guess I am good. You know what I mean? Well, fuck it. You know what I mean? So that just gave me even more incentive to, like, keep doing that. On my own, being the independent guy, you know what I mean. So I was like, well, even I was even more proud of being independent, of being, you know, a solo thing and shit like that. And everything was going pretty well, you know what I mean. I was barely making it, you know, bare, paycheck to pay, day to day. I had to some days. I if, if some days if I wanted to eat, I had to go drive Uber. So I had made enough to eat. All right, mm -hmm. seriously, all right, for real. So sometimes I would just have to go out there and okay, but I was I was so engulfed in doing what I was doing, but. You know, what, what was happening was that I was making, you know, these videos sporadically, you know, for clients and shit like that. But I still wasn't doing YouTube again. You know, I wasn't doing that um, until one day my best friend. This was in this early December of, 20, of, of 2017, early December of 2017. You know, every time that we would get together, you know, what I mean, I was going through my trauma of my, you know, things that were going on. And so, you know, frankly, you know, I was just talking to my friend like, man, this fucking sucks, man. I got to do this, man, this fucking thing over here, man, whatever. And then, you know, you know, I was always like, I was complaining, you know, a lot to him. And then one day, you know, we were just getting drunk and shit like that. And again, you, if you see this guy, this guy is a, you know, six foot five fucking kickboxer. You know, this guy could squash me, you know. But again, you know, you, you know, I'm like the guy that has more energy, you know, I'm like, ah, I'm like the Tasmanian devil. But anyways. He had enough that one day and he fucking got me and he grabbed me and he fucking started shaking me. And he goes, bro, you're fucking doing me fucking crazy with this shit. I can't fucking think anymore. You know, blah, blah, I fucking love you. You know, you're my bro. You're my this or that. But you, you, you're, this is unhealthy, you know, for all of us, you know, for me and for you. You know what I mean? Like blah, 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 blah. Yeah, because I was, I was only him. I was only talking to him about that shit, you know. But as he was telling me all this, it was like I was realizing, yeah, I was being a shitty friend. I was being, you know, I was being shitty to myself as well. You know, all of these things. And then he goes, listen, man. You lost it all already. What the fuck? You know, why are you not talking about all these things on YouTube? Because it wasn't just talking about, you know, my life, but I was also complaining. Yeah, man, you know, they're fucking, you know, you know, the reason that this sucks is because the government's doing this and the government blah, and the fucking Bitcoin. Blah, blah, blah. And, but, you know, he didn't want to hear that. He just wanted to talk bro stuff. You know what I mean? Guy shit. You know what I mean? I get it. Um, 
I get it now. I didn't get it at that moment, but but, uh, yeah. I, but I mean, I did. I did when he was that moment when he was shaking me. He was telling me shut the fuck up already. And then, but but then I told him, look, bro, you're 100 percent right. I'm not being a fucking man right now. I'm being a fuck. You know what I mean? I'm 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 being a lesser man that I should be. And uh, you're right. You know what I mean? I should be doing. What you're telling me, we're just putting this shit on YouTube. I got nothing to lose. I literally lost it all. What the fuck else could happen? You know what I mean? So I go to him, listen, man, you know what I mean? Don't, don't, don't even worry about it, bro. Next time we see each other in a few days, I'm going to already have my first YouTube video up. And he's like, ah, whatever. But he, he didn't take it seriously. You know what I mean? Um, even though he knows how I am. You know what I mean? But still, he was just also, you know what I mean? Like, until, yeah, sure enough, you know what I mean? I didn't even wait that long. I think it was like a day or two later. You know what I mean? I already had my first video up, and I sent them the link. And I go, look, there you go. Bam. And then the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And then before I knew it, I was daily uploading again. I was uploading daily. And again, you can go back to my channel, and then you'll see, again, late 2017, from that fall point forward, I was do doing daily uploads. I just stopped doing daily uploads early this year. So about two and a half years of yeah. daily uploads, you know what I mean? They're a good, you know, almost daily uploads, but a lot. And, um, but yeah, anyway, so going back to the beginning of that, when I was fucking doing, you know, when I started doing those uploads and I was just talking to the camera, like I'm doing now, talking about my life, my situation, what's going on when blah, 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 the conspiracy, the fucking this and that. All of a sudden I started getting views. All of a sudden I started getting comments. From people I've never fucking seen in my life. All of a sudden, the channel started growing. And I'm like, holy shit. Are you kidding me? This is what people want. Just me to fucking talk? All right, let's do it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, that's all they want. You know what I mean? Just for me to talk. Oh, because I was doing what I was doing before is that I was not being authentic. You know, back in 2015, I was just doing the little film. But when it came to talking to the camera, I, 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 I didn't know what to say. I didn't have anything to say. Because I was scared to tell people what I really had to say. But when I lost that fear of thinking what people had to say, like where I did not care anymore about anything, I lost it all. What the fuck are you going to do to me? Go fuck. You know what I mean? Like I was just like, ah, you know, fuck you. And so then that's when I was like, all right, let me speak my truth. And that's it. Basically, the rest is history. Ever since then, um, I've been speaking my truth almost every day or close to that on YouTube. And um, I've gotten way better. You know, I look at some of my early videos. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm cringing. Like, fuck. You know what I mean? Like, holy shit. Until now, you know what I mean? You know, now it's like, you know, now I look at some of my videos that I do now and I'm like, holy shit, who is that guy? You know what I mean? Like, that's pretty well, you know, thought out and spoken and this and that, you know, in comparison to, you know, how I was before. So I've come a very long way. And at the same time, I'm looking at where I'm at, I'm at now and I'm like, bro, I still have so much go, so much to go. I haven't even, I'm just starting this new little adventure. And for anyone that's followed me since I've been out here in Mexico, again, look at all of I came out here with $1,500, a couple bags, and fucking nothing. Nothing. You know, literally the fucking dog, the bounty hunter coming after me. For real. You know what I mean? Like, pretty fucking hardcore. And look at me now. You know what I mean? Like, look at me now. You know what I mean? Like, most of you guys already know what's up. You know what I mean? I only had, I mean, fuck, I even got married for crying out loud. You know what I mean? Like, shit. Hey, you, you skipped a lot of that, you know, from, from going from, uh, you know, uh, from starting up the, the channel. To boom, you're already in Mexico. There's a lot of stuff in between there you missed. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get to that. But, you know, like, I'm, but basically, um, but, you know, that's the, that was the beginning of the life I'm living now. You know what I mean? Like, that that basically changed my life forever. You know what I mean? Like, in the sense that, like, the minute that I started doing daily uploads again, but I was now talking to you people instead of just making films, my God. You know what I mean? That changed everything. That really changed everything because all of a sudden now, when I was doing my Uber, when I was doing my thing, you know what I mean? And like people wanted to talk. It's like, fuck, now I had something to talk about. I had I had uh, things to, you know, hey, look at this, look at that, check this out, check that out. You know what I mean? Like all of these things. And uh, it was pretty intoxicating and pretty great. And then, you know, doing that, everything was going wonderful. You know, um, you know, there's a lot of things that happened in between. But um, as I was taking care of, look, basically what I was doing in L.A. was just um, every was was um yeah yeah was um earning enough money in order just to survive. not just survive not just survive but to pay off my lawyer and to pay off my freedom in Texas oh, yeah. because what Texas again Texas stopped me okay because um you know I had a, a Washington tag okay and uh, they didn't like that so I got profiled um I got arrested I got my car searched illegally I got all this shit even though I had the law on my side I had everything on my side I had three lawyers I had everybody saying I was 100 zillion percent correct, the corruptness was so bad that the only thing the only thing that could have gotten me out was money, which was 
fine in another point in my life, you know, where I all I had to do was buy it. You know what I mean? But at that point, I already lost everything. So I couldn't, you know, I had to work really hard to, to buy my freedom. And you already know how that is. If you miss a payment, oh boy. You know what I mean? You know how they repo your car. You know, they're going to repo your ass too. You know what I mean? And so they were already like, yeah, we're going to send fucking Dr. Bounty Hunter out there to fucking LA to go pick your ass up and bring you back to Texas. Yeah. And so I was like, what the fuck? So I was like very, you know what I mean? Thank God that I, I had legal counsel in L.A., like a really badass motherfucking lawyer. You know, that guy, you know, we were really good friends, you know, and um, he, he helped me out a lot. But um, but yeah, man, you know, what I mean, if it wasn't for that guy, holy shit, you know, things would have been very different. And I would have been, you know, I was very scared for a long time, you know, of my freedom. But and, and again, you know, I still was remaining in, in L.A. You know, I was remaining in the U.S. I was like, well, fuck it. I'm going to I know. I can fight this. I know my laws. I know my rights. I know my all this shit. But then I got a curveball, another curveball thrown at me. The roommates I was living in with, you know, they went there to live the L.A. dream, you know, to live the fucking, you know, the the Hollywood dream. And what like like what happens to a lot of people, they fucking fell flat on their face and they fell miserably. And they they and then one day they woke up and said, all right, we're going back to Alabama. And I'm like, oh. You know what I mean? Like now what? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and so yeah, they they left back. You know what I mean? To the to the East Coast with their tail between their legs. But then I got stuck without a home, and mm -hmm. so you know I was like, I only had a few weeks, like three weeks time to figure out how to get out of there. And then that's when I got the rude awakening. First of all, I couldn't find another roommate situation that was uh, not some insane Please. lethal. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I want you know I at least wanted to fucking have my sanity, you know, at the very least, you know, or some live somewhere where I didn't. Okay, and besides, remember, I had a camera equipment, I had a few things that I still had value. I couldn't just be fucking living anywhere either, you know. So I was trying to find something, and um, I couldn't. And um, and then I go, well, fuck it, let me see if I can uh, get an apartment, you know. I reached yeah. out to a family member, I go, hey, maybe you can help me with this or that, whatever. And like, yeah, 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 no problem. But then I realized I couldn't get an apartment either. Because yeah, I, I, mean, I, had to, just I, didn't, didn't, I mean, it wasn't even the money at that point. I mean, I, I needed like, you know, to, I, needed, I needed to give blood samples. I needed to prove, you know, I had the credit score, you know, like oh, all of these fucking things. And I'm like, who can I get a fucking apartment? Who? You know what I mean? Like, I know I couldn't get one, but who else? Who could get one? You know what I mean, like, what the mm -hmm. fuck is going on here? I mean, I, I needed like four thousand something dollars to get like a fucking box and i'm like what is this shit you know what i mean plus all of these other things and i looked everywhere i exhausted that but at the same time i go well fuck it you know what i mean i got dog the bounty hunter like right behind me you know i got like all this shit on top of me too i don't really got too much time to fuck. i mean i can't be fucking around i can't fuck off and so my option was basically well i gotta move out of california you know move out of la you know what are my choices really not much oh and um or live out of my car or live on the street in LA. Those are my two options. Right? And by the way, by the way, there's plenty of people that have jobs and they work and live out of their car. But I, I mean, and I was a choice, but I was like, I really don't want to go down that far. I really, really, if I can afford, if I can avoid it, I'm, I'm going to try to avoid it. So I go, well, fuck it. Let me start looking into living abroad. Fuck it. You know what I mean? I've already done all kinds of shit. You know, at this point, you know, what do I have to lose? And um, yeah, man, you know, I, I just started looking. I, I went to this website that had like the cost of living and, um, you know, for a bunch of cities. And I, I fucking put, you know, what is it like the, the cheapest cost of living? You know, I, I made the. Yeah, the um, Cambodia. yeah. And then when I that's and then that's all of a sudden when I found here, you know, as I was going through all the cheap cities, I was like, you know, all these places in Africa, all these places in India, all these places you don't want to live. All right. Yeah, yeah. Until I found the first city in Mexico and it was Merida, you know, where I'm living now. And then all of a sudden, I was like, well, well, this place has to be like the poorest place ever. It has to be full of cartels, full of everything. Until I looked into what, you know, Merida is. And I'm like, holy shit, this place is like paradise. It's like lost here. So I looked into it a little further. I researched it. I saw, well, this is the place to be. I looked at, hey, you know, how, what it would cost to live out here. And I was like, well, fuck this. You know what I mean? I can live out here and I can, you know, I have still, you know, what is it like contact with LA? I can work. I can do my thing. I'm, you know. I'm a, uh, what is it, a digital nomad, whatever, you know what I mean? And yeah, you know what I mean? I, I, I counted up all my pennies, you know, sold a few things that I had left, you know, and all that shit. And I had like about $1,500 to my name, all right, after I bought the cheap plane ticket and everything, one way to come out here. And um, yeah, I came out here with $1,500, and all of a sudden, <clears throat> when I came out here, it was a huge, you know, another huge uh, visceral thing, like an, another you know, traumatic experience, you know, trauma can be good and bad, you know, it's a, 
Yeah, but you wake up big time when you go to a foreign country, and, and all of a sudden it's uh, you're in a fast paced place like L.A. and and Miami, and all of a sudden you come into Merida, yeah, you know, where it's just laid back. It's minana time. Yeah, I mean, basically, dude. I mean, the, the when I when I got to the my you know the first home, the first place I stayed at, I was like, holy shit, I'm in Cuba. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I mean. As I was really excited and like, wow, this is going to be like, wow, this is another adventure tool. You know what I mean? Like really another adventure. But at the same time, you know, secretly inside, I was a little scared. I was like, oh, shit, did I make the right choice? You know what I mean? Like, fuck, you know what I mean? Like, the fuck? But yeah, man, it was beyond the right choice. It was like, you know what I mean? Oh, someone's asking me, what do I do for money? Just YouTube? No, no. I mean, I do YouTube. I do consulting. I help. Um, you know, I'll talk more a little bit about that in a bit. But yeah, I consult. I I you know, I'm a freelancer, you know, like I edit videos for clients. I still do that and shit like that. So I do, you know, so I do a lot of things. But again, my rent is 250 bucks. Yeah, they don't understand, you know, Mexico is inexpensive to live there. Yeah. So yeah. I rent, you know what I mean? So my rent is 250 bucks. So it's like I don't got to hustle that much. You know what I mean? So and mm -hmm. it allows me to do what I love, you know, which is, you know, the YouTube things and other things. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's, again, you know, another advantage to being out here. So those are the things that I realized because I, I, I said, and when I mean, I realized already when I was in L.A. that I was doing everything humanly possible. So every day, my routine in L.A., before I had moved out here, my routine was I woke up fucking as early as a crack of dawn. Crack of dawn, I fucking woke up. And um, I was basically going to the Internet and searching for the news of the day or what am I going to talk about? And I made a video. I would make a video. All right. I would, you know, bake the video, edit the video, upload the video. And then after that, I go, I go to Uber. I work. You know what I mean? Or I was a personal driver. You know what I mean? I was one or the other or, or hustled. You know what I mean? Like, Hey, okay. I got a client. I got a this. And that's what I would do. I would every single day. It was like, if like I figured, I found out the time, you know what I mean? And every once in a while I couldn't because, you know, I had to work or I had this, I had that like, a, you know, more things on my plate, but it was okay. I, I gave, I, you know, I, I gave myself uh an excuse to be like, okay, bro, you're actually working. You gotta make some money and you're doing something you love. You know, it's okay. You don't have to upload, you know, this weekend. Don't worry about it. You know, you only, you know, what are you gonna miss? 30 fucking viewers, you know what I mean? Because again, it wasn't like I was, you know, growing a lot per se, but I was growing. Um, but I realized that this is what I love to do. So, and you know, back when I had to come to that choice, that's why I was thinking, you know, the digital, I mean, the, I have to leave LA, but I was like, I gotta find a cheap place to live because all I really need is a roof, you know, some sort of uh, thing that I can make for income, not much, you know what I mean? Um, you know, again, I could basically live off my editing if I find a cheap enough place to live and I don't even have to have to leave my home. You know what I mean? I'm, you know, just do what I got to do there. But then that's why I left up to Mexico because I was like the cheapest option, you know, and the best option. You know what I mean, I, I didn't feel safe in the middle of, uh, I don't know, fucking... Africa or, or in, no, no, I was, I mean, then fuck that. I mean, I was just thinking, I'm, I'm thinking like Alabama, you know what I mean? Or fucking, you know, some cheap place to live in the U S <laughs> You know, I didn't trust the internet there. You know what I mean? Like, it's just shit like that, you know? <laughs> just being realistic, bro. You know, hey, you know, the more you know about the rest of the world, you realize that the U.S. is a pretty dire situation right now. And a lot of the U.S. is third world country situation. You know what I mean? So, so I mean, yeah, I mean, I was thinking, well, fuck it. I mean, I can just move to another, you know? I wasn't really thinking about international until I didn't have a choice but to think international. Um, but, yeah, what was I saying, though, before? Yeah, so that was my routine in the, there. So then when I had to... You know, when I had to move, when I had to make that choice that I, I, I didn't want to make, um, all of a sudden, uh, what you might call it, like um, I said, why well, I, I want to keep making these daily videos. So what would be my option? And then, you know, my option was, you know, to come out here. You know what I mean? So that's why I came to Mexico and I, I bet on myself. You know, like I tell you guys to do a lot. You know what I mean? Bet on yourself. Bet on yourself. You know, invest in yourself. And that's what I did. You know, I bet on myself. I invested in myself and bam, you know what I mean? It worked out for the best. Now, what happened when I got out here? Well, when I got out here, I was, you know, in a sense, you know, from day one, I was already like in ultra survival mode now because now I'm in another country. Um, I didn't have a bank account already in the U.S. or it was very, you know, lackluster. So I was like, OK, what am I going to do for, you know, getting my money out here, um, you know, and, and so many things, you know what I mean, hurdles, you know, just a million hurdles that when you move to another country, so many hurdles. So as I was going through these hurdles, I mean, basically I was, I didn't really have much time to fucking do my routine of waking up, going through the news, I'm making a video. And at the same time, I was like, well, I'm having a lot of fun with this new adventure now. You know what I mean? I don't want to just fucking sit there and, and, and bore myself with all this boring news and shit like that, even though it's great. And, um, people have an audience and all this shit. I was like, well, fuck. I mean, I'm, I'm living an interesting life right now in this moment. And I go, you know what? Why don't I just start vlogging again? You know what I mean? 
And that's what I did. I started vlogging like how I vlogged originally, but now I had an audience. Now I had an audience. And so now I was vlogging my adventure, you know, from leaving LA, the digital nomad thing, <clears throat> Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people were already interested in, you know, that kind of stuff, living abroad, whatever. So, and I go thinking to myself, let me start filming this a little bit. Just again, like when I lost everything after the Texas situation and I filmed that rolling a blood thing. <clears throat> so I go, well, let me, um, do, you know, that, that was my thought. Let me just start filming this and filming my adventures here. So I, I started making videos about my my troubles going to the bank and the fees and my troubles, uh, whatever, or trying to get some water or whatever. You know what I mean? Or going putting to your my, hand on the window when you lock yourself out of the apartment. <laughs> exactly. You know, one thing, you know, no matter what happened, I was like, yeah, those are great video. And so I was just started making these videos and not thinking too much of it. I was just making them for my current audience. You know what I mean? Just thinking that, well, you know, instead of talking about fucking Bitcoin, you know what I mean? Let me talk about this. I'm sure people would fucking be interested. And they were. And not only were they interested, but as I was making video after video after video about living out here in Mexico, all of a sudden, I started getting a new audience. This new audience that I never imagined was ever going to even be interested in me. It was an audience like you. And a lot of people that know me from that point on after I lived out here because it was just people that found me because they were looking for, you know, already at travel videos or they were looking for, you know, how to leave the U.S. or things like that. And all of a sudden, there's this fucking guy out here that has a whole, you know, library of videos about not just what it is to live out here because, you know, there's plenty of uh, YouTubers that make videos about, oh, what it is to live in Thailand or things like that. But they're not, uh, you know, they don't make the videos like I do. There's other people that make videos like me. But you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, you watch my videos about Mexico and it's like, you know, I'm hanging out with you here in Mexico. And we're just, you know, out and about running errands. And, uh, you know, I'm telling you, you know, you're getting insider information that you're not going to get from a, you know, video like the top 10 things yeah, yeah. to do in Mexico. You know, it's like, no, dude, you know what I mean? Like, or top 10 things to not do in Mexico. You know, nah, you know. Shit like that, you know what I mean? Like it, it's it's I don't make those kind of videos. I make more of the videos of like, uh, you know, how to well, fill up fucking water. Yours are like, uh, is a, it's a blog video, but you're on your bicycle or, or walking around town. So yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, it, and yeah. I'm, I'm on my bicycle now, you know what I mean? But again, if you go way back into my library, you know, I was on foot for a very long time, and I was going through a lot of the trouble. You know, thing is, I remember I've, I've already covered a lot of these issues. You know, I'm I'm living here now, and I, I'm married to a Mexican, and, and all these things, but. And so, like, things are a little easier for me now. But, again, I can still share that with you. But what I was recording back then was all of the problems or all of the hurdles or all these things that I was going through or, you know what I mean, encountering and all these things. And so, all of a sudden now, I have, a, a you know, a video. Where, like, for example, like, um, I had trouble going to the bank and getting some money from the bank. You know what I mean? So I made a video about that whole fucking thing. I wasn't just talking about it, but I was just taking you with me and talking about it and, you know, going through that whole thing and just, you know, a lot of things like that. You know, uh, before, I, I do want to say, you know, uh, uh, Lodak, he, he put, uh, you know, just one of the things that you talked about way before about maybe starting to happen. He uh, uh, deposited his check today and the bank got half of the money because they're running out of cash. Oh really? No way. Yeah. yeah. Remember what you were talking about uh, a couple of a few months back about what the, the banks can start doing. You know, it's in, this is my money. I want my money. Eh, not it's not your money. It's not your money. Once you give them, once you give them your money, it's their money. That's it. That's how it works. Look at the contract. Read it in case you're in, in case you're you don't believe me. Read the contract you signed with your bank, and it'll tell you right there. Once you give them your money, it's their money, and then. You know, they'll give it to you if they want to. They don't have to. Yeah, yeah. You know, again, don't take my word for it. You know what I mean? You know, so. Yeah. Now, you know, uh, some people are asking, you know, well, yeah, uh, you, know, how, the question how is, you know, how big is uh, Merida? Oh, um, it's, uh, well, okay, from my standards, it's it's tiny. You know, because I come from big cities, um, but but it's actually pretty, it's pretty big. It's, it's 1 million and 1.1 million. So, mm hmm yeah. yeah, yeah. Also, I'm very fluent in Spanish. Someone was saying there in the chat. Um, yeah, I mean, that does help me a lot. You know what I mean? With the fact that I'm very fluent. Porque yo hablo español. Yo soy cubano. Yo vengo de Miami. You know, imagínate tú. Entonces, yo hablando en español aquí, no hay ningún problema. Well, well, that's, because, hey, that's because you have that Cuban accent, though. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, that that's true. You know, they also that's another thing too. They see me coming from a mile away, which is good. You know, because sometimes they confuse me with a gringo, and I just bust up the Cuban, and they're like, "Oh, okay, he's Cuban." Fuck, we hate him even more. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> they love Cuban. Well, they love Cuban. Uh, uh, like you told me something that I didn't know that it is the second safest city in all of the Americas. Correct. Yeah, Quebec is the only other safest city. I think. I think it's Quebec. I don't know. Quebec or Ottawa. Ottawa. I was in Ottawa. Ottawa. But yeah, uh, definitely not America uh, or uh, the United States. Right. You know, well, yeah. I mean, it's safer, yeah. Where I'm living now is safer than any city in the U.S., safer than any city in Mexico, safer than any city in all of the Americas, Central, South America, you name it. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, yeah, so now you're in, in, in Merida. You're doing uh, videos, uh, going around town. You're doing a uh, uh, – you're going to start a cooking show. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing a bunch of shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's just I'm doing whatever. As a matter of fact, later today we're probably gonna do a a, a guacamole making video because someone asked us. So I got another. I got I another channel now, which is where I put. I'm putting my Mexico videos on. Is on the other channel. Um, but you know, now I'm doing more things. You know, like um, the, I, I uploaded a video today where it was just me and my wife, and we were just having a drawing painting contest. Um, we're gonna see if we're gonna do a guacamole video today, and I'll put that up in a couple of days. And and you know, I'm. I'm doing other stuff now. Now that I'm, uh, now what I do out here for money is that I help. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. So now what I do here for money, you know what I mean? Like what I, one of the things that I do is that, like I help individuals out there. Uh, you know, I'm finding a place to live, or or, or they want a tour, a food tour, or a bar tour, or if they want um, you know, personalized personalized services like translation services, or finding a home, finding a rental, um, whatever. You know, I help them with anything and everything. So that's what I do now. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm, I, I make, you know, I earn money through there. I earn money through YouTube. I earn money through, you know, my my clients. You know, or you know, I still have clients in LA and other parts of the country. And, and again, yeah, you know, right now, um, things are dead and slow for obvious reasons. The quarantine. Uh, but I mean, uh, up until like a few months ago, you know, I had clients in Russia doing crypto stuff with them. And uh, again, I got clients in LA where I do like like Instagram promos and I do you know shit like that. And you know, again, it's just gather the, the money here and there, and then boom, you know, make you know, it's just the life of an entrepreneur, the life of a businessman. Mm -hmm. And especially now, I'm I'm starting out. You know what I mean? Like I've uh, you know now having my own little thing out here. You know, now I'm um, the thing that's bringing me the most. Uh, you know. Finan you know, my, the most financial stability than anything else has been my Mexico stuff. So that's another thing, too. You know, one thing that I like to bring up a lot, you know, the fact that and I tell people all the time, you know, what I mean, like, you know, people are always like confused about like, you know, for example, like they say, oh, I love Legos, you know, at 40 years old. I love Legos, but I don't know how to make money off of that. And the thing is, it's like this, man. Look, I loved playing with the camera. Again, you guys heard the story. All right. I've been already talked to, you know, a good majority of the time already here telling you my story. And um, I, I love the camera. All right. And I love the camera to the point where I wanted to do that over anything else. You know, again, I, I did. I woke up extra early in the morning and my lowest point of my lowest, I woke up every every morning, you know, just to do my video and then and then go to work. You know what I mean? My video came first. If I did not do my video, it's like I didn't shower. It's like I didn't, you know what I mean? Eat. It was just like really, that was the, my mindset. So you have to, first of all, wherever you are out there, you got to find that first. You got to find your thing, whatever it is, whatever it is. Again, it could be playing with Legos or a camera or talking about sports. It doesn't matter. Then you have to just keep doing that all the time. And when people tell you, what are you doing? You tell them, I'm talking about sports. What does it look like I'm doing? You know what I mean? Like, you know, you know, there's no like, you know, like, no, no, no. What do you mean? Like, how are you going to monetize this? I, I, I don't want to monetize. I just want to talk about sports. You know what I mean? Whatever. Or I just want to play with my Legos. Now, the next thing here is like, okay, you're like, if you're not happy at your job or your career and you would rather talk sports or you would rather play Legos, then it's just making that decision. Now, how are you going to make ultimate money and how are you going to support yourself off of talking sports or playing Legos? A lot of fucking hard work and a lot of dedication. Now, how can you accomplish that? Again, it's very easy if you love what you do. You feel me? Again, if you're obsessed and love what you do so much, you do crazy things as like me where I left my country. I'm living in the middle of fucking nowhere, you know, just so that I can do these fucking videos. But well, middle of nowhere, wait a minute, it's a million people. Yeah, middle of nowhere. I know, okay. but, you know, just, you know, middle of nowhere, you know, my mind, all right? I'm just saying, yeah. you know? 
But I'm not. I know I'm not in the middle of nowhere. You know what I mean? I know I'm just. Yeah, a lot of people think Mexico. You know, they think, oh my God, you can move into Mexico. That's where all the drug cartels are at. Yeah. No, listen, man. I mean, that's why I talk in these. I'm very, you know, um, expressive in the way I talk because of that. You know what I mean? Because like when I say in the middle of nowhere, look, I know I'm not in the middle of nowhere. But a lot of fucking people out there think and know, or you just think and have the idea that I'm in the middle of nowhere. So I just like, you know, yeah. Let me yeah, let me right. add that. Let me add a little bit more to your vision. Look, I'm in the middle of fucking nowhere, and I'm still making it happen. You get what I'm saying? Like, whatever. I'm not even gonna sit here and pretend like I'm in a big city. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. Well, like the point is, is that there's no excuses, and there's always, like you said, people are always creating an excuse. You know, whatever the fuck. But anyways, the point is, is that I'm fucking out here, and now what I'm doing, what's bringing me the most financial stability over anything else, is me helping people move out here, which I never thought. Now, uh, before all this uh, craziness started happening, you know, I remember you had a, uh, you were starting to build up your business about getting clients to come down and, and mm -hmm. buying uh, property. And you were hooking them up with uh, real estate agents and lawyers. I mean, did that start taking off really good? And I'm still and doing it. How about that? How about that? Like right now, um, in the midst of all this, you know, people are still, you know, people that have a few resources, you know, they know things are going to open up, even if it's temporarily, even if they open up for one day. All right. And they're just setting themselves up over here so that the minute that they can get out, they're out. And I'm here yeah. like, no problem. I got you. I'm here. You know what I mean? Just let me know when to open up. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, what is it? Like the fucking net. So when you're, when you fall out of the plane, you know, you can just. Oh, so like, man. You, uh, I've said it before. You're my new world order coyote. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? And that's, and I mean, that's what I'm doing. You know what I mean? That's in a sense. You know what I mean? Like in a way, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of people that need um, my services, uh, whatever the service, mm -hmm. sometimes they, people just need to talk and, 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 you know, need to learn. I mean, uh, like, what is it? Like insider information um, on the best way to do X, Y, Z. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, bro, I'll be more than happy. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times I do it for free on my channels. You know, if I'm in a live stream and you ask me, I'll, I'll fire most likely tell you. Now, some people want to you know, take my time, you know, that I'm busy living my life to, you know, ask for help. I'm like, ain't no problem. This is how much it's going to cost. You can't afford it. Then look on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, you can come and you can ask me for free or you can watch this video or watch that video. If you don't have the patience or you want, you know, me to, you know, answer, or sometimes you know, they want you to hold their hand while they do it. Yeah. No problem. You know what I mean? It's fine. Look, there's some things that I do that too. You know what I mean? Like there's some things that I, I you know, I pay someone else. I'd rather, you know what I mean? So I understand that. And so that's what I offer. You know what I mean? I offer both. I offer free, you know, all my services are free and they're also, you know, they also cost money. And it's just, I offer both. You know what I mean? And you know, everybody knows, you know what I mean? I don't fucking make no bones about it. I don't have like a paywall. I don't have, no nah, man, all my shit's for free. If I got time, I'll fucking sit there and to fucking answer all your questions. If I don't got time, I'll be like, look, bro, wait a couple days. You know, I'm going to do my live stream. Ask me then, or, you know, look and watch this video or, you know what I mean? This is how much it's going to cost you, you know what I mean? An hour, you know, blah, blah, blah. And we can chat later tonight. We can chat here, whatever. And that's it. You know, at that point, I make time because, you know, I got to fucking feed my horse. Yeah, yeah. There's Lambo the horse back there. He's yeah. guarding the entrance. And that's another thing, thing, too, bro. I mean, I keep, I keep like a fucking plastic horse with me when I'm talking about like serious topics, you know what I mean? Like about the economy and the banks and the fucking the lizard people and all this shit. So that way, you know, I don't have anybody out there, you know, like, you know, saying what you know what I mean? Like, um, yo, who, who the fuck is this guy? How can you take him seriously? I'm like, I already beat you to it. I'm a guy with a fake plastic horse. All right, you know, you know, she take it from what it is. Okay, you know, I, if you're if you're gonna start fighting with me, bro, you know, you're the idiot down there in the comments, not me. Yeah. <laughs> <He's> yeah. So <laughs> now, now, you've been down there for what uh, about a year and a half, two years now, right? It's gonna be two years in June, man. Yeah. Two years now. Now you're married. How did that come about? No one's. You really long haven't story. talked about that part of it of how you met Christian and and. Yeah, it's a long story, but uh, you know, basically we met. Um, our anniversary was on the sixth of this month. So the sixth of this month, we're in one year. Wow! Wow! Yeah. That's quick. Yeah, and uh, we got married in January. So we got married before we. We're together for a year. But, man, look, basically the way it worked is like this, man. I'm already like an older guy set in my ways, all right? Anyone out there that's an older man, you know, can figure it out. Same thing as women. Um, she's she's younger, you know. Uh, she's 30. I'm 38. Actually, she's 29. I'm 38. Sorry. She's going to kill you now. She's like, she heard me. <laughs> She should um, say, but yeah, but basically it was just that. You know what I mean? We we fucking met and you know we were dating, everything was going great, and then that's it. I'm like, hey, look, this is what I want in my life, this is what I'm doing. 
she's the same way. Look, this is what I want. This is what I'm doing out of my life. And we just, yeah, that's it. You know, we just melted together and it was great. You know what I mean? I mean, that's it. I mean, basically it was just that. And then um, we're here. Now, uh, so now you're in Merida, you, you're pretty much getting settled. You're going to get a, are you guys going to get a house or a property and build a house? Nah, we're working on all that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, right now, oh, right. Um, you know, again, you know, I'm American. You know, I live out here at the moment. You know what I mean? I don't want to make any bones about it. The fact that I'm, you know, I still don't have my ties to the U.S. I do. You know what I mean? Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, at the moment, I'm not going over there because, you know, the whole travel situation, the restrictions and all these other things. But, you know, I got no problems. You know I mean, I already solved my situation in Texas. Uh, you know, um, I think I just, you know, in a few months, that shit's like going to be expunged from my record or, you know, a year. So, again, it's not even a thing. Um, it was only in Texas, nowhere else. So, I mean, I don't really have a problem. Um, so, I mean, you know, I can, you know, I can go back assuming things are fine. I have gone back. Everything's fine. Um, but, you know, I, I'm living out here already for two years and things are great and things are wonderful. And this is a great place to invest and a great place to, to move to and a great place to things like that. But, you know, I got like an itchy trigger finger type of thing. You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't, you know, as much as I want to be here and live here. I also want to travel. I also want to see other right. places. I also want to, so does she, you know what I mean? So that helps a lot. Yeah. Now you guys went to Cuba, you know, last year or first part of this year. But yeah. You, uh, you're doing traveling. Where do you think you see yourself in like, say five years from now? Do you see yourself staying in Mexico? I don't know. Dude. I, don't know. I, don't, I don't make those five year plans, bro. Yeah. I don't, I'm not that kind of guy. You know what I mean? I'm not, I mean, my plan is more like, uh, I have even longer plans. You know what I mean? Meaning that I see myself, you know what I mean? Like when you see, you know, that Jeff Berwick guy, uh, the dollar vigilant. No, nah, okay. I see myself, you know what I mean? Very financially um, well off, you know what I mean? Um, because I've already learned a lot from my mistakes. I see myself, you know, doing, um, you know, videos. You know, I see myself, uh, you know, maybe talking instead of uh, to an audience, you know, on the internet, maybe talking to an actual physical audience, you know what I mean? Things like that about a lot of things that I talk about on my channel, um, about, you know, technology, you know, the world, whatever. I see myself doing a lot of things, man. You know what I mean? Honestly. And like, but the thing is like, I don't, I don't hold myself down and saying that, Oh, in five years, I want to be here, do this. No, man. Like I, all I, I just project in the sense of like, look, I want to do all of these things with my life. You know, look, one of the things that I did in LA was like, I lived the LA life. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I was making film, you know what I mean? I was getting praise. You get what I'm saying? I, in a sense made it in Hollywood. You get what I'm saying? But right. I didn't, I didn't get tied down to that. You know what I mean? Like, and so, so I, I you know, I, I've lived in many, many, many lives. So that's, that's if anything, you know, my five year plan is that, you know, by then I want to have so many more adventures, you know, just in the two years I've been here, I've had so many adventures. So five years from now, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you know what? I want to have my passport with, you know, full, you know what I mean? That's one thing I would like to have accomplished, you know, shit like that. You follow me? Okay. Yep. You, try out yep. again. you can go ahead and take it. Where's my bed? Uh, what about the uh, uh, next place you're going to go travel to? I'm um, probably, I mean, one of the things that I'm, you know, me and Christian are talking about a lot is going to Oaxaca. Oh, okay. Know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is another part of Mexico and stuff like that. You know, there's a few, um, you know, there's a few areas in Mexico. I, what I want to do is I want to travel around, I want to travel around Mexico, um, kind of like how I traveled around the U.S. You know what I mean? I know Mexico is an amazing country with a lot of amazing things to see, and I would love, I would love to see it. You know what I mean? Just like I, I, I mean, to me, you know, it was so amazing that I got to go to Chicago, spend the week in Chicago, see Wrigley Field, see the Bean, see what you know, like that. You know, go all around Texas, see Texas, see California. You know, California's beyond. I mean, I used to be one of those guys at uh, East Coasters. You know, like oh fuck California, fuck LA, fuck these guys. Until I went there, and I'm like, huh, yeah. You know, California is actually pretty awesome. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I feel like such a fucking asshole. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> now, uh, uh, how far away are you from from like uh, Tulum? Not too far. Not too far. In fact, we're we're most likely going to be going to Tulum. You know, fingers crossed. You know, but she's actually working on a project now that she has a client out there, and we're probably going to okay. go out there um, to do some work. Uh, but um, it's a I don't know. Hold on. Hey, I'm gonna say, hey, 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 No, like three, four hours. Three hours. Not too far. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, yeah, because I've seen, uh, uh, you know, it's a beautiful place, and it's very touristy, 
But then I also saw this documentary about the destruction of the ecolo- economic, or, or not economics, the, the, the ecology. ecology. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of that going on, you know, a lot of, uh, you yeah, know, but that happens all over the world, bro. You know what I mean? Like, unfortunately, you know, it's just the, the, the white man or the, I mean, I don't want to say the white man because it's not really all of us, but it's uh, the, the investor with money. You know what I mean? In this yeah. case. You know what I mean? It's not just the white man. You know, now the Chinese man. You know what I mean? The, the yellow man. You know what I mean? Whatever the fuck, you know? Um, but, you know, that, that's just – or the fucking Arab. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people with money out there with a lot of countries. But, yeah, basically that's what's going on is that a lot of these places uh, that have been undiscovered for a very long time, these fucking uh, paradises, you know, all of a sudden they're getting overrun by people with money. They're starting to overbuild, you know, oversaturate and, you know – just like everything else, you know, just start polluting and fucking it up. And so, um, yeah, you know what I mean? I don't know too much about that area or too much about that. I saw that documentary. I know you're talking about it because it's not just there. It's happening in other places. I mean, what was that? No, Merida. The thing is, Merida is very different. You know what I mean? Merida, I mean, I'm like half an hour away from the beach, you know, and the beach is another city, another entity, another everything. Yeah. That's that. That's that. Not that is the capital of the Yucatan. So it's like saying like, you know, New York City or fucking Sacramento, you know, it's, it's a capital of, you know, so it's the biggest they have plan for it. They have better uh, uh, development. For it's it, just or? a many that's completely different. You know, Tulum, Tulum is on the water, you know, Progreso Beach is on the water. I, I'm not on the water. You know what I mean, I'm like 30 kilometers from the water. You know what I mean? Like I'm, you know, I'm far, I'm far from the water. I'm, I'm not far, but I'm far enough. You know what I mean? And so that is very different. You know what I mean? So, um, because of that, you know what I mean? Like um, the tourism here is also very different. The tourism here is more on based on art, based on culture. You know, like a lot of people that want to come to the Yucatan and they want to see um, like um, the pyramids. They want to go visit the, the ruins, you know, the Mayan ruins. They want to go visit, you know, a lot of uh, the natural stuff. Many that is kind of like the, the, the place where people like, um, you know, they stay here and then here is like the home base, you know, the closest uh-huh. place to go to all these other places, right? So that's, I mean, many does that, you know, many does like a, <clears throat> an art and cap, an art and culture capital in the Americas, um, you know, kind of like, you know, behind Miami, you know, like in but Miami's his own different thing. Um, but yeah, many does a lot of things like that. So it's very quiet out here. Um, a lot of the people that come for tourism out here, they come for the quietness or they come for because, you know, they, they want to go to museums. You know, they mm-hmm. want to go to the ruins. They want to go to things like that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So the tourism, the tourism that comes out here to the to this area of Mexico, um, where I live, is is that. You know what I mean? It's more like a cultured uh, tourist. It's more like a you know like a chill tourist. It's, it's you know you're not coming out here to fucking spring break. If you want a spring break, you go to Cancun. That again, Cancun was very different in the '90s and 20 years ago. Cancun today, mm, you know, it's very yeah. you know, bueno. Not bueno at all. And so, you know, many the, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's close enough to that, but it's also very far away from that, you know? And the way things are run in Mexico are very different. You know, you go into like the Cancun area and it's like, you know, they're, you're, it's very, it could be very dangerous. Yeah. You know, you come out here to the Yucatan, you're the danger. You know what I mean? Sure. I mean, that's, that's, so it's, it's a very different. And so every state out here has state and, 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 and what is it? Um, sovereignty. They do their own thing. Um, but so there's good and bad with that. You know, you know, the current government right now is a little bit more sympathetic with uh, what they're doing in the U.S. You know what I mean? So they're trying to close everything down, spray people down, you know, do all this stupid shit. But, you know, the president of Mexico is like, OK, we don't want to do any of that stupid shit. You know what I mean? We're not believing the propaganda. So, you know, the politics are involved now where like the local guy is doing the opposite of the president and the people here, they're, they're you know, it's, it's, at the end of the day, it's a lot of poor people who live in Medina more than anything else. So, mm-hmm. you know, they have a president that is very elitist. So a lot of the, fuck, I mean, I'm in mean a government, I'm sorry, a government in a local government that is very elitist. And right. so um, the local people are not happy. And, and especially now during this whole um, quarantine, they're even less happy because, you know, the government... It's taking care of the rich people, the the, the 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 expats, the foreigners, you know, the money. But there's a lot of fucking poor people here. You know what I mean, and by, I just mean regular people. I don't mean poor. I'm just saying, you know, fucking regular middle class, normal people. And, and you know, they're not, you know, he's just kind of like spitting on them. You know what I mean? Like kind of saying like, all right, we're, you guys have to close your business and then um, you have to pay your employees. It's like, but yeah, but wh- 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 I, that's a great idea. But from wh- what money? You know, wh- are you going to give us the money for that? 
you know, that, and so that people are already like, you know, going like that. You know, they're if I, in my area, I can walk around, I can do whatever the fuck I want, and the cop doesn't even look at me. If I, if you're in the poor part of town, you know, the cops there are starting starting to try to force people in their house, and you know, really? the poor people are not gonna have that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. So it's you know, it's like why? You know what I mean? Why are they not even doing anything in the north fancy, you know, expensive area, but in the in the in the in the poor areas, you know, they're starting to crack down. I mean, so you know, there's people like me that live out here and other expats with money and power. Not you know, I don't have anything, um, but they're looking at that shit too, and they're not happy. You know what I mean? They don't want you know what I mean? Like most, you know, there's okay. So, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening out here and, um, and, my, and they might push out the government, the local government, you know, what I mean? uh, because the president of Mexico is of the people. He's like a Bernie Sanders. You know, he has he has the um, he, he is more like Trump, but he's he's a Bernie Sanders guy. You know, what I mean, he's very social you know, very for the people. He's but he's, he's like Trump in the sense of like, you know, what I mean, he, he talks a certain way. Um, and he does things no matter what, you know what I mean? He doesn't give a fuck about what the fucking, you know, left opinion is or that opinion is or that. No, no, he's just going to do it because that's what the people need and that's what the people want. And so he's loved well, that. You know, if we have a president that, that does things for the people, that's a good thing. But yeah, he yeah. does. He does. He's a, yeah, I think he's a, look, I'm not a politic guy, you know, he has his things, but I think he's actually pretty good. He's actually really good, you know what I mean? And all the things that I've seen done for Mexico, damn it. Okay. Now, uh, completely off the topic on a different question. If uh, you had any uh, superhero power, superpower that you could choose, what would it be? Uh, <laughs> Talking uh, to workers? I don't know, man. I never thought about that. I never. Um, probably invisibility. I was just gonna say maybe invisibility. Yeah. Yeah. So I can be a fly on the wall. So I can like you know get make myself invisible and go into like the White House or go into like the CIA or go into Homeland Security. Just you know, I'm just curious. Just yeah. to see what's going on. Yeah. 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 That kind of shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. invisibility for sure. You know, because that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Just to see what's really going on. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious. Well, hey, so, we've, been, uh, we've been going for an hour and fifteen. So. Oh man, wow. This uh, this has been a fun chat. Uh, yeah. We might have to do a part three you know, if, if we're up to it, but to, just to see how uh, Mexico is doing after all this coronavirus. <gasps> I said it. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh oh. No, it's okay. Hey. You know, they're monetizing the now. So. We can say it now. That's right. Yeah. Before we. They go. allow us now. They allow us to say it now. Thank, thank God. Thank, you know, they're so, they're so nice. Oh, uh, yeah. And the other thing nice about it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, see, back here, uh, Trump is now taking the opposite. He wants to hurry up and open up all these uh, businesses, open up the uh, economy, and actually telling the states that he has the power to do it. And I'm thinking, that's ah, scary. That's that's scary. scary. No, 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 you do not have the power. And that's why I like Bernie Sanders, because he's a, a state's right person. Well, look, I'm going to tell you, like, you know, let's talk about that for a second real quick. So, for example, in Mexico, um, that's why, um, in a sense, like the, the Yucatan president, you know, I'm in the Yucatan. This is the state that I live in. That's why the, the governor of the Yucatan, you know, can do whatever the fuck he wants and doesn't have to listen to the president. Now, if the people don't like it, the people can revolt and push him out, which is another awesome thing about Mexico. But, you know, that's kind of like what's going on here. So the president, even though he's suggesting and this and that or whatever, each state is autonomous. They, 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 you know, they, the, the feds cannot, you know, tell the Yucatan do this. So they can't tell, you know, um, Oaxaca do that. That's here in Mexico. Now, what's happening in the U.S., this has been a long time coming. When Trump was saying, listen, I'm not oh. going to step in because all the all the states and all the governors are doing an amazing job and I approve and they're doing such a great, awesome, amazing job that I – I, the president, the feds don't have to step in. But <clears throat> let me remind all you motherfuckers out there, if I got to step in, we have all the power to do it. And there's nothing no one can do about it. And he yeah, said it. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's martial law. That goes to show you how far and how deep, you know, this shit is that people don't have any idea what the fuck is really going on. Yeah, dude, listen, man, we've been in martial law for a while. Even though this guy said medical martial law, um, you know. At the beginning of this thing, listen, again, we've been in martial law for a while. Um, we have no rights. Uh, that's something I learned in Texas, okay? And a lot of people learn the hard way and so on and so on. You know, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's been getting uh, 
that's why I want to get out of here and go to Mexico. Yeah, I mean, you're not the only one, man. Again, like I said, you know, like I, I, I was uh, thinking to myself, man, this is going to slow down my business a little bit. And it has. Look, I'm not going to say it hasn't. But, man, I still have I have clients, okay? I got clients that escaped. They got they, they got here like the day before they closed everything. Um, I have clients, uh, again, that got stuck out there. And they're, you know, they have a place out here and they got a deposit and I'm dealing with all that. I got others, you know what I mean, that, and, and you know, two others, you know what I mean, that are were on their way out here. You know, they were doing the you know, selling stuff and moving stuff and shit like that. So they're going to take them a little longer and they got stuck in the U S and, uh, and I, yeah, so I got people all over the place. You know what I mean, so yeah, maybe right now I'm not necessarily, you know, per, uh, per se, um, you know, working as much as I did a couple months ago because you know, my, my more clients, more work, but yeah, man, everybody's still there. Everybody's still calling me, emailing me, you know, um, I'm still getting paid for certain, you know, services, uh, just not as many, but it's still, you know, it's trickling in. And I, I know that as, uh, you know, time goes on, you know what I mean? In the next few weeks and months, it's going to, you know, it's going to, it's going to explode even more again. I think I'm going to have even more clients than I ever thought, honestly, because it's not even that, man. You know, again, we were talking about this the other day, like the, what's your most watched video right now, which is the the cooking, I mean, the cleaning of your, of your uh, cast iron skillet. I like a lot of the videos that I'm getting uh, views on now are, you know, uh, you know, older videos yeah. talking about survival or, 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 or other shit like that. And, um, you know, a lot of people are now watching prepper stuff. You know, a lot of people are watching survival things. A lot of people are watching like a bug out, how to get out, how to, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just getting real, bro. And look, and honestly, I think that right now what's going on, it's I think this is going to be a dry run. I don't think that, you know what I mean? I think this is just a little bit of a dry run around the world. But, man, this is, again, the whole world is put, can come to a stop. You know, to, it should be. You know, more that, 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 uh, they, they closed the borders in Canada and Mexico, uh, except only for uh, transportation of, of, of uh, products. Um, what about the uh, Mexico's southern borders? Have they been closed? I don't think they have. And I'm mean, wondering if yes, I mean, yes and no. country and then come back up through the bottom. I mean, yes and no, man. You know, the thing is that like each country is dealing with it completely different. What's really going on is this, man. The propaganda is too strong. The propaganda is in every language and in every country and it's all talking about virus bad, virus kill, virus vi you know. So people are freaking out. So the, unfortunately, there's a lot of people in a lot of parts of the world that all they have is like a, a, they're living in a village they have a phone they have facebook and you already know how that works and i mean facebook is telling them you know all the negative horrible things about this so you know these so people that, yeah. yeah there's a lot of people around the world uh around the world that have very limited education not not to their fault of their own very limited resources very limited so many things and now they're getting bombarded by this and they don't even know what to think or what to anything so you know, a lot of people are, 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 are very scared. A lot of, I mean, look, in, in Mexico, and this goes for all of Latin America, you know, I, I, I can, I mean, I, I can't, I, I don't know for fact, but I'm pretty sure this is how it would be because it's already, it's happened here. So I can only imagine Guatemala, Honduras, you know what I mean? What, okay. But basically, you know, roads are open. You can travel freely, but as you get to a small town, a small village, a small anything, you cannot enter. You know, they and so it's not like the military or, or anything like that. No, it's just the local police department. And in some cases, if they don't have a local police department, it's the local militia, the local people. You know what I mean? Stopping anyone and everyone from coming into town. And so you have to, like, go around. You get what I'm saying? You know, it, it's all highway, so you don't have to stop at the whatever. But if you're like, for example, it does impede tra travel because, you know, if you're traveling, you need gas, you need to eat, you need to stay somewhere. And if there's no one that's going to take you unless you go to a big city and even then you get what I'm saying, you're going to have a lot of trouble. So you come to Merida and you're probably going to have a lot of trouble, you know what I mean? Finding uh, a place right off the bat where normally you would never have any problems. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, it's just so big as people are scared. People believe in the. So, you know, there's a lot of people out here, you know, I got my neighbors and, you know, none of us are, you know. You know, I'm not, you know what I mean? I don't believe any of this bullshit, but I got plenty of other fucking, you know, people that are neighbors and friends and shit like that, that they're all like fucking, you know, scared, you know, like this is the end of the world type of shit, you know, and, and, and that goes all around, you know what I mean? That goes everywhere and not just in the U.S., but all around the world. And so, you know, in a lot of places, you know, like, again, the, the poorer you are, sometimes, you know, um, you have a way more to lose, especially if you don't know what the fuck is going on. So that's why a lot of these like smaller communities um, they just close, you know, they just close to everything, you know, and they and they just hunker down. Now, when it comes to survival, you know, what I mean, if you I know anything about survival, about um, 
you know, what is it like, you know, living off the grid, any of this shit? The more the most important thing is not having water. I mean, it is, you know, water, food and uh, having guns and, and shelter. But you got to have community. If you don't have community, you're done. You know, you're not going to survive out there in the middle of nowhere by yourself. As much as you think you are the first gang, that the first little band of martyrs that fucking comes through, you're, you're, they're, you're toast, bro. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's the truth. So you need community for a million reasons. Okay. You know, meaning that you can grow yams, but they can grow corn over there. That guy has cows. This guy has fucking whatever. You know what I mean? You all together. Okay. So there's tons of community all over Latin America. So a lot of these places are like, well, fuck it. You know what I mean? And then, by the way, this is the same thing in India, the same thing in, in, uh, in, in uh, Southeast Asia, the same thing in Africa. So a lot of these people, they're just very scared. They don't trust their government. They don't trust anything. You know what I mean? So they're just, well, fuck it. You know what I mean? We can't work. So a lot of people, like, for example, from a small little town uh, 50 miles from here, they might work here in Medina. But now they can't work here. Same as in India. You know, people in New Delhi, you know, they got to walk. 150 kilometers, like 300 miles. I don't know what the fuck. Walk 300 miles on foot to their village. Okay? The, okay. So a lot of these people are going back to their village, and they're now hunkering down there. Again, they have to go back because there's no work. There's no money. There's no nothing. So what are they going to do? Starve on the street? No. They're just going to go back to their village. And in their village, you know, again, their family member has a farm or, the you know, everybody takes care of each other. You get what I'm saying? No one's going to starve. No one is going to starve. You know what I mean? Everyone's going to take care of each other. And especially if, you know, you're out of work because you can't go to Medina to work. Or you can't go to New Delhi for work. Right. And so, you know, you're seeing a lot of that. You know what I mean? You're just seeing that, again, in a place like Mexico, Latin America, you know, India, we're way better prepared because people have community. People have their small little village, their hut. They, they, they grow something. They whatever. And the people in the U.S., Canada, Europe, they don't grow anything. They don't know how to fucking do any of that. They don't know how to survive. You know, they don't know how to do it. Mean, yeah, there's a lot of people in the U.S. And, and Canada that do know how to survive. They live off the grid. But again, if shit really hits the fan, you get what I'm saying? Like, for example, the people here in Mexico, like in Mexico City, are you know, it's not going to get to the point where they're going to, well, maybe Mexico City, because that's like another level. But in other parts of other major cities, you know, people here are not, many, they're not going to get to a point where they're going to be fucking rioting and then going and starting to take over these little villages. No, yeah. it's going to be the other way around. The people out here are going to be at the mercy at the, of the villages because the villages are the ones that are going to be bringing the food and the, the, the supplies and the this and the that. And then those villages are going to be able to come over here, sell it to us. You get it. So there's no supply chain, you know, um, situation where we got to wait for the Walmart truck. We got to wait for no, because the people from the villages are going to make their way over here because they need to fucking they need money. You know, they got to sell their overproduction of food. You know, the people out here, you know, need the food. You know what I mean? Just, and it's all, all that shit just kind of like, you feel me? Yeah, I've seen it happening here, especially with the uh, uh, supplies on, on the grocery stores. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's, yeah, get me out of it. Get me out of here. Get me out of well, here. I mean, I mean, Bill, I mean, look what's happening in the U.S. And in the U.S., like, let's say that you're in a small little town, you know, and you try to sell your vegetables in your town. You, the, the local cop is probably going to arrest you. Yeah. Let alone if you fucking take that shit to, and try to sell it somewhere else. So, I mean, right there, you know, right then and there, you know, you're not even allowed to even practice, you know, just low, normal survival within your own community. In fact, no. the opposite. Yeah. They've already, uh, they've uh, banned uh, or made it illegal. They, they went to the stores and said, okay, you're no longer allowed to use, uh, to buy paint, furniture, gardening supplies, and I think one other thing. But yeah. I mean, you garden. can't buy seeds. You can't buy yeah. seeds in many places. I yeah. show people here in Mexico that, and they're like, they don't believe it. Because out no. here, you know, right now you got plenty of time. So, like, you're home at home. So, all of a sudden, you want to fucking fix your radiator. Yeah. Or you can go to the fucking, you know, uh, the, the Home Depot and buy that. You know what I mean? Or you want to fix, you know what I mean? Like, it's like right now, in fact, it's those, those are, look, so they close. Okay. So, non essential in Mexico is the beer brewery. Essential is like um the hardware store you feel me because mm -hmm. it is you know what i mean think yeah. about that you know what i mean like you, you know now you need alcohol you know what i mean like you're probably gonna need alcohol for 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 an injury not to drink we don't want you drinking right now we know it sucks but this for this is again you know what i mean if, if you think it sucks so bad you know what i mean again imagine you know things were you know it's like this is the, their version of this is for your own safety. You feel me? But then what happens? You know what I mean? Like all of a sudden now you're taking this thing away from people that is going to cloud their minds. You feel me? And if anything, they're going to start thinking a little bit more clearly and be like, maybe this fucking propaganda is fake after all. You see, it's, it's very different out here. 
Yeah, the U.S. people. I don't think they're they're. I don't know if they're just not intelligent enough, or just uh, they've been. It's not, it's not that, bro. Out. It's not that. It's not that. Look, it's, it's, everyone is smart. They don't listen to it, and they just listen to whatever the government says. Yeah, it, well, it's 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 some of that, but like the, the reality is, is that you can, look, man, you're old enough to fucking know this already, man. The the United States population, unfortunately, has been dumbed down. You know, through yeah. many many years of watching a lot of TV of uh, the education system, which is fucking horrendously horrid. All right. You know, again, you know, uh, you know, and I can go on and on. You know what I mean? Like, uh, have you seen the movie Idiocracy? Oh, yeah. 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 We're living in idiocracy. You know yeah. what I mean? We are. You know what I mean? And um, and then this, I mean, in, in some places, idiocracy in some places is pure hell. You know what I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, but but, uh, you know, the U.S. is it's, it's slowly going into idiocracy. You know, a place like Mexico is not a place like Mexico is actually, you know, what I mean, they're taking advantage of this situation, just like the United States at one point took advantage of that of the same situation to become a mega That's superpower because other countries were fucking up yeah, you know yeah yeah on that note so we're gonna have to end this oh, okay. uh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. So, yeah oh yeah let's end it because i got someone at the door oh. all right so <laughs> okay so perfect yeah so make sure i'm gonna uh, have jose's links down below for his different channels and to go to and and we may have to do a number three on this one so he's got to go answer the door I'm going to end the broadcast. Well, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. Um, it was a lot of fun for me to do um, with Cali Picker. Please don't forget to check out his channel um, for more awesome stuff. He has a lot of really cool stuff. And uh, don't forget to check out my channel if you enjoyed this interview in case you don't know who I am and this is the first time you ever heard of me. Um, regardless, the point is, is that you already know what to do here. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon. But more importantly than anything else, please stay awesome. Thanks again for joining me today, and I'll see you guys in uh, tomorrow, a few days. Who knows? You already know. I got a billion videos. I can see you guys in five minutes. Bye.